three, two, one. And hello, everybody. Welcome to SEN After Live. I am Jay Wade. And I'm Kaylin. And holy shit, fuck Batman, have we got one today? Haha, <laughs> that's right. We are on episode number one of this all new SEN Live After Show. And Kaylin and I are pleased to welcome the founder and owner of Merc with the Movie Blog. He is also host of Talk and Schmodown and our producer, Josh Rayner. How you doing, bud? I'm doing great. Great to be here. And it's great to have you on. This is the first time that you've been on uh, either After Live. Well, you've never been on After Live with us, and this is definitely your first time here. Is this is our first episode? Absolutely, I'm I'm thrilled to be on the premiere. Oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Uh, how you doing, Kaylin? I'm doing good. This time change just has me whooped. Yep, I bet your dogs are loving it, huh? Oh, yeah, they don't know that the time changed, so they just, you know, wake up whenever they feel like it. Sounds like my (laughs) four-year-old. Oh, your child, yeah. Yeah, my baby doesn't know either, and so she used to sleep a little later where I could get ready for work, and she was still asleep, but now she's awake. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's made life real fun in the mornings. Well, well, I've got a cat. The parts of uh, of, uh, having a kid, it's great. Yeah. Well, my cat just, you, well, we all know cats are assholes, and, and so my cat does not care at all about me or what I do or when I do it or if I'm around, unless it wants food or water or its litter box changed, so. Oh. <laughs> yep, I know that, Bill. <laughs> yeah, other than the litter box, I'm living the dream, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, well, let me tell you guys a little bit about what we're going to be doing here on SE and Afterlife. Um, obviously, uh, Christian has started his own morning show on his new network, Schmodown Entertainment Network. And uh, we're going to be covering that and talking about it, expanding on some of their uh, discussions from the week, answer some of those viewer questions that come in. Um, Josh is here. Uh, he's going to join us whenever he can. Uh, just for shits and giggles, or especially as a Schmodown contributor. As, like I said earlier, he is host of Talking Schmodown. He is a very knowledgeable guy in that field. Um, and also, we will have guests from both the Schmo and Collider worlds and beyond. And uh, to kick it, kick this show off here, let's just start with an interview with Kevin Smets. Uh, I had an opportunity to sit down with him last night. Kalen, unfortunately, was unable to be there, but uh, Kevin and I had a really good discussion. So let's pop that in here, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. And here we are, everybody. Our first guest on SE and After Live is an editor and actor who has worked on films such as The Day After Tomorrow, The Chronicles of Riddick, and Constantine. He's also one of the top movie trivia showdown competitors who will be playing for the Inner Geekdom title on December 7th at the Schmodown Spectacular 4 Live in Los Angeles. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Smets is here. How are you, sir? I'm great, man. That, that's quite an intro. That's funny because people are going to be like, what, Day After Tomorrow or Chronicles of Riddick? And uh, yeah, back in the, when I first moved to L.A., I worked for a company called New Deal Studios. Uh, and they did a lot of miniature miniature effects for things like, uh, I mean, with one of the movies we did was Spider-Man 2. And all the company did was drop a giant, like, two-ton piece of metal into a giant pool to capture the water effects for then in the finale when that whole boathouse area goes down. It's like, um, so I, it's funny. The, the movie they worked on right after I left the company, because I left to start doing editing and stuff, was Batman Begins. They did the, they built the tumbler. And so, like, if I wanted to stay oh, wow. with the year for one more year, I could have worked on Batman Begins, which is one of my favorite movies. So, <laughs> kind oh, of man, that but would yeah, have been amazing. A little context about the whole why, why some of those movies I've worked on. Oh, man. Yeah, I just uh, it was a rainy day here a few days ago. I put on uh, the day after tomorrow and uh, I like that movie, man. Uh, I like I love disaster movies and Dennis Quaid. It's it's hard to go wrong with him. So, yeah, yeah, yeah great point. movie. Yeah, great movie. Um, and and how, speaking of the the films in the industry, you know, I'm I'm curious, where did you get your love of film? Where did that come from that drew your interest into working in the industry? 
It sounds cliche, but it actually, like many people, it was actually Star Wars. And what really got me into it actually was back into film where I wanted to work in it was when I was in high school, I went to the uh, special edit, or sorry, I went to um, the opening night with my high school sweetheart at the time. We saw Independence Day, and uh, it was one of only four theaters where they test ran the the special edition trailer where it starts in like as a small TV and then the X-Wing flies through it. And it's like coming back to theaters, you know, uh, is, you know, the star Wars trilogy. And that kind of reawakened my love for film. Cause like as a kid, I was doing child acting and all that, but I, I was kind of looking forward to getting out of that for a while and just being like a kid again, or at least being a high school kid. And so, but uh, right around like junior or senior year, like, yeah, my love for kind of film got back into it. And then that's when I knew I wanted to go to film school when I went to college. And then the rest is kind of history. But it was Star Wars. So everybody, you know, it's cliche. A lot of people say Star yeah. Wars inspired me, but it's the same for me. No, it, it you, like you said, it sounds cliche, but it's just it's the absolute truth. So, yeah. you know, uh, it's like that for so many people. And, yep, what you you were child act. I know you were in Newsies, correct? Yeah, I was in Newsies, which is it's funny because I thought I, I could get away with that um, for just the insiders <laughs> that knew me when I said that line to Chandru and Emma didn't let that opportunity pass. And I, when I <laughs> storm off, like she she totally says it, and which was funny because then I get met, I was getting messages all week like, "Dude, you were in Newsies," and I'm like, "Yep, but yeah, I did." A, I was always the kid that almost got the part. Like I remember I tried out for the like the third RoboCop movie, and I was like at the last callback, but they ended up going with another kid. Um, I tried out for home improvement, that show with, uh, yeah. Yeah. And I, I was I, I made it several, several rounds in, but I did for the J Jonathan Taylor Thomas part, but I didn't get, it. it's just so funny. Like, like sliding doors, what my life would have been if I would have gotten the part and I was in home improvement. I probably wouldn't be on the schmo down. I wouldn't know half the friends that I know now. So I'm kind of blessed with where I'm at. So yeah, it's funny how that works. What would have been the biggest role that you almost gotten? Uh, I there's a movie called Man Without a Face starring Mel Gibson, and I was a finalist between me and two other kids, and each of us had a day to go on the set of Far Forever Young and hang out with Mel Gibson. Uh, and I, the day I went, they were shooting a really complicated scene in that movie where he was like flying a plane, but pretending like he's flying a plane in a treehouse, and Mel Gibson couldn't like get the lines right or whatnot, and so. I think also when he first met me, he just realized I wasn't the kid for the lead part because he just probably saw me. He was like, no, he's either too young or because it was supposed to be that we would hang out with him on set and he'd get to know me. And I think I, I had lunch with him or I think I had lunch with him or I had like a, a, a whatever, like a break with him. It was, but it was, it was shorter than I anticipated. And then uh, I was later told that he was doing it with the, he was going to have the same kind of day on set with two other kids. Um, but what was cool is one of the kids, there was like Elijah Wood was in that movie. And then there was this other kid that was in it too, that I knew from like auditions and stuff as a kid. So I got to hang out with him and, and Frodo for a little bit when we had like our lunch break, um, and stuff, but oh, yeah. I, I the part. And then none of, none of the other two kids got the part. He ended up going, uh, with, um, uh, oh, funny. Now I can't, uh, remember the name and it's a schmodown. It would be a Schmodown question. Nick Stahl. He ended up going with Nick Stahl for Man Without a Face, who he discovered, and it wasn't any of the kids he met on set. So, like, mm. it probably just was like, not none of these guys, and then he discovered Nick Stahl. So if I would have gotten that part, who knows, then maybe I would have been John Connor in Terminator 3. <laughs> you know, you never know. Uh, you never know, man. <laughs> yeah. So you got to watch Mel Gibson work, and, and you said you he couldn't remember some lines and whatnot. Yeah, it, it was sounds really like. If you see that tree scene, he's like trying – he he had to know where everything was on a real airplane. And he, I actually ran the lines with him as the other kid, and I think he was testing me there. But also he was having trouble. It was just a bad day. It wasn't an easy cake day like a scene in the kitchen. Um, right. And he was having a lot of trouble um, just remembering where each of the – because he was play pretending in the tree. And he and I just remember he had to like figure out well this is there and and it was just like oh you know because he wasn't in a plane he couldn't be like there's the altimeter there's the so he had to remember all these plane terms but he wasn't looking at it he was just looking at a fake tree or whatever a tree house so um, he was having a lot of trouble there and yeah that's funny I don't think I've told many people that story that you can have a little scoop there <laughs> yeah but yeah well I'm curious do you remember how 
how was his demeanor like? Did he handle it like? Was he trying to keep he himself nice. composed, or was he getting upset or anything? No, he wasn't upset at all, and he was super nice to me. I could tell he was frustrated, but he was super nice. The other thing that I remember is I just didn't I didn't know he was Australian or whatever or whatever. I forget what he is, but um, I just always thought because I was a kid, I always thought like, oh, like he he's like you know in Lethal Weapon, he he's American or whatever. And so when I first met him and he had the accent, I remember that threw me off. But yeah, no, he wasn't getting frustrated. He didn't show any signs of, you know, later when you see videos of him pissed off. He didn't throw a Christian bail on set. How about that? <laughs> oh, thank God, too. Being a kid with the kids around, that really wouldn't go over. Well, back then, I'm sure not many people would think twice, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so then you, you'd moved on past the acting a little bit more and you got into the editing. Um, what was your first job, uh, as an editor? You know, what, where was it and what was that experience like? Well, I went to film school first and I was, the idea was to be a director like everybody wants to be. Um, and that was really like something that I wanted to do. Um, but then, uh, I realized like, I didn't like being on set as much as I liked being in the edit bay. I liked putting it all together. And so. I kind of gravitated towards that. I still directed, like I directed a civil war movie in film school and then a sci-fi one and then kind of moved on. But I love the editing process of that more. So when I kind of, when I graduated film school, um, it was rough finding jobs at first. Cause that always is. Um, and I was going more for, I was getting, uh, I was doing more of like going, doing PA works. And just like I said, when I was working in the miniature effects department and stuff like that for new deal studios, um, but I always kept my eye on trying and I got music videos on the side and stuff like that. But it wasn't until, uh, I stepped away for a little bit and then I lived in Austin for a spell. And then my friends were trying to get me to come back. Uh, and, and, uh, a, a buddy of mine, Greg kind of got me back in. I mean, once you, once you get in, in the editing world, it's kind of editors, hire editors, they always say. And that's how I've known Rachel. I met her on a show, but like Rachel's gotten me work. I've gotten Rachel work. Like it all works out where it becomes like a, a small bubble. So it's hard to get in, but once you're in, you're kind of set. And my friend just wanted me so bad to get out of Austin and go back to California because he was like, what are you doing over there? Like, you should come back here and, like, do what you're meant to do. And so he got me my first job, and then the rest is history. Oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Now, it, now, editing, do you come in only at the end of the process, or are you are you ever there during the filming and whatnot to see – how that's going in order for preparation for editing, or is that just after it's all shot, then that's where the editor comes in? Uh, rarely do the editors come in. Uh, the couple times that I've gone to set was uh, just if they wanted us to see a vibe. It wasn't Usually it was for special shows, though. Like I went to set, and I was in the van for a couple prank shows that I did. So like I would have to be in the van with all the camera operators, but they wanted the editors in there to make sure they, we could see ahead and be like, dude, I'm going to need a shot of that guy. Like, why aren't you filming him? You know? So it was kind of like I would take the pseudo director role in the van, even though there was a director. So the director could concentrate on feeding lines into the actors. And then I was just kind of in control of all the cameramen telling them where to go. That That's one of the only instances that I've really been on set. Usually we can, we kind of get brought in towards the end of the process while they're still shooting. We start editing earlier episodes or when they're all done. And, and that's that's great. I just thought of something, and you're the perfect person to ask this about. Now, I have a huge issue with – now, I, I have no problem, you know, uh, enjoying movies and whatnot, but I notice little things. Uh, example, I notice if a camera is on someone and just as it cuts away, they're moving their hand up to their face, then the next time it cuts back to them, their arms are behind their back or oh, yeah. their necklace is different than it was two seconds ago. Like, I noticed those things. Um, is there – and it kills me. Now, I, granted, I I don't know anything about editing uh, films or anything like that. So this, this is just a guy who is a movie fan and from what I watch. But is there any way to remedy that? Like, why – in my mind, I'm like, man, they should hire me to sit on set and watch these things and say, no, wait a minute. When we just saw him last, his necklace was down at this angle or his yeah, hand yeah. was at this position. What is there any way to remedy that? Uh, that happens a lot more in scripted than, well, in reality, it happens a lot, too, and you just have to deal with it. It's funny you say that because, like, I remember as a kid, I used to read these cool books called Film Flubs where, like, they would call attention to things like that. And, you know, it's like, oh, that's funny. That's a film flub. 
But now, like, that's basically what my job is. Like, we'll just get notes like, oh, she's walking down. Like, I just did. I worked on it. I'm working on a show right now. I can't really say what it is. But, like, um, in one shot, this guy, you know, because you take footage from all over. And then you put footage here and there. So you shoot things out of order or whatever. And one of the shots I used, uh, I had to get reminded, like, hey, the guy's not sitting on the chair back there. The security guy or whatever. He needs to be sitting there. And so I, I couldn't use that shot. And that would have been something that you would have caught because you would have been like, hey, the guy's not, he was this there in the right previous shot, you know? Is that, I don't know, is, I just still don't understand how that can be let, how that can get past uh, the final, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being too, am I being too picky? Uh, no, I mean, you're not being picky, especially in scripted, you want to see it. The thing that I always catch all the time is what was called lip flap. And a funny thing, flip flap is basically when on the reverse, like if I ask you a question and then um, you answer it right away, but then in post, they want you to delay for like a second, they'll have to roll back. It's hard to explain without showing, but in order to extend your pause, they'll have to roll it back. So then they have your face while I'm still talking to create that artificial pause. But if you can see the side of my mouth moving, while there's no audio being played, most people that don't follow, they'll just look at your face and they'll be like, they don't see the lip flap. But when you're an editor, you see it all the time. And because we have to look out for it and I see it all the time on the show friends. Like, so even big shows and sitcoms, you'll see it. That just means you have a good eye for it. But yeah, I don't think you're being too picky, but I mean, for large ones, like the necklace moved or the glass was half empty and now it's full. I think there's one that always bothers me speaking to inner geekdom in, in the Wolverine where uh, when she, when he's talking to Mariko, like they're, there's a uh, the chopsticks that are stuck in the food, and then the very next shot they're not. Stuff like that, I'll always see, you know. Yeah. Man, that that just oh, that gets under my skin. And there's so you know, uh, I could talk about this one for a it. long time. <laughs> yeah, well, don't let it get under your skin, pal, because sometimes it just can't be avoided. Especially if you see it in scripted, though, like they should do better to like look out for that. And there, are, there's people's jobs on set to notice that, but yeah. And well, they should hire me. (laughs) Um, But uh, speaking of editing, and we're going to use this as a segue into uh, into a little bit of SEN live talk and uh, some Schmodown talk as well. But um, Christian starting this new SEN live uh, show on the on the SEN. uh, Well, it's the Schmodown Entertainment Network. It's hard not to say the SEN Network, but then. You're like, well, the N stands for network. Um, yeah. Good job, Christian. More like ATM <laughs> machine, automated yeah. teller machine machine. That's like when people say, oh, I got to go to the ATM machine. Like they're, they're repeating the, the M word. It's funny. Yeah. We'll, we'll just blame that one on Christian, huh? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, but on his, on his last day, there was a great video that you put together with, uh, with Jonah Gallegas and, it's just he's a great uh, musician. Um, his songs that I've heard him do for Collider Live are just great. How did all that come together? You're working with him on that video because it was a yeah. great video. Oh, thanks. Uh, I I just had heard about that video, so kind of just wanted to uh, put images to it. You know what I mean? And so we knew we wanted to do something special for Christian's last last day. So kind of linked up that way, and uh, the rest is history. Yeah, that was great. Great. Thank, Thank you. you very much from myself and the fans too. Yeah, it was hard. Pull. The fun, the funny thing is just finding all the footage because like kind of remember things and, you know, I was going for like the big fish. So I was like looking for his first ever, you know, first ever Collider Live, first ever Jedi Council, and then kind of fill in the blanks there. You know what I mean? It's, kind of, it's hard yeah. when you edit all day for a job and then you go home and do it again. So, you know, it took, it took a little bit, but uh, it was fun. It was, I was happy to do it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you again. That was awesome. I've watched it a couple times, so oh, really good. Thank you very much. And w- what do you think of this first week of the SE and Live so far? Oh, it's been great, dude. Like I, yeah. I, I, I knew about this kind. Of, it's kind of been a long time coming, so you know, I really want it to do well, and I like the idea of merging because I remember when they merged the movie trivia showdown with uh, when the the matches started going back on. Schmoville a page or whatever the schmoes know and it was like oh are they going to stop doing that and now it's kind of a blending of both which is great um and i appreciate uh that and like send live i mean you're not you know you get send live and you don't have to stop supporting collider live even when they're on the same time like you can choose to listen or watch one one day and the other the other day or whatever you want to do and you could listen to both later like 
Um, and so, you know, but supporting Christian and, you know, I wanted to, any, I told him, you know, from the, from the get go, anything he needs for the network, I'll be there. And we got a show in the works too, which I can't really talk about. Um, but yeah, so it's, there's a lot of fun things in store. And I mean, this is just the beginning, you know what I mean? He's just getting underway. There's going to be so much content and so much, uh, so much greatness that's going to be merging, um, the whole Schmodown world with the Schmoes No world and the Schmoville and the history and old people coming back and the, you know, the, the, the old, con- this, it's going to be great for new fans and old fans, you know? Oh yeah, definitely looking forward to it. Um, uh, especially just the 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 crew that he's got lined up here with Kate and Winston. That's just that's gold. Brett, solid gold. RB three, you can't beat that. Uh, I mean, you can't see him, but you hear that laugh, and it makes you smile. You know, yeah, it's an infectious laugh for sure. Yeah. Now I'm with Ellis as far as that damn schmobit. Uh, I don't that thing. Schmobit. Yeah, I'm glad they uh, they toned it down just a little bit, but I do like that thing. That's funny because, like, so on day one, I, I, I know about the robot, and I wanted to throw, you know, it's like when you want to throw money down and just help out your friend. And so I, I just I loaded it up. I hadn't even been listening yet. I just I knew that the robot was going to be active. So I went and I, like, put 20 bucks in, and I just said, like, hey, it's Mets supporting you on a great show. And then I click over the video, and I didn't realize that Ellis was having a real problem with it earlier. And so he's, like, just getting started on another story, and then my my robot pops up, and you just see his face, like, get all pissed. And I was just like, oops, that's that wasn't my intention for the $20 that I spent. Uh, and so then it was then it was just making me laugh when people were doing it. But I think I'm a, I'm a proponent of the robot only for like small time. It's like a bit like you should do it for like yeah. 10 or 20 minutes an episode. Um, and then like the only thing that would annoy me is like when people are typing in a lot of letters and stuff, because then you're just hearing like T T S S S S S S S T T T S S S. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. And I think even to add to the bit, perhaps turn on the bot when uh, when Ellis doesn't know. You know what I mean? Like when it's not supposed to be on and let it just, just interrupt him just for shits and giggles a couple times. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, no, um, <laughs> it, I just – I love those guys so much. We're And we're super excited to be covering that show and talking about that show and expanding on it here. Yeah, um, you guys – I mean, you guys used to do – you did After Live too, right, from the other thing. So it's like – yeah, yeah, we and that show is still going on. We we split the crew of four and half, and uh, two of us are doing this one now. And we added a third to the Afterlife crew and got a new host over there, Sarah. So, um, actually, they just interviewed Emma Fife, uh, the and she'll be on their first episode this week. So, oh, that's yep. great! Yeah, I can't wait to hear that. That's awesome. That's yeah, gonna be it's gonna be real good. Um. Was uh was wanting to get into some Schmodown stuff here, but before the actual Schmodown, you came up out of the fan leagues, and uh, I w- wanted to know if you could tell us all about how you became aware of the Schmodown, and then what led you to your decision to join in the fan leagues. Yeah, uh, well, I'm friends with Rachel, and so I told Rachel yeah. like, hey, like, I think when I had, I'd known about the Schmodown because of the Schmoes No, and like I'd followed Collider a lot, uh, Jedi Council especially. And then when they had the Schmodown, I was, and when Rachel, when I heard that Rachel wasn't on it yet, I was like, you, or I just, I forget what the order of things was, but I remember we saw, I think it was Suicide Squad together. So no, it wasn't Suicide Squad. It was an older movie. We would, she sometimes joined a, a crew of mine to see movies and she said, she's going to do the Schmodown. I'm like, Oh, great. And so then uh, I would start following the Schmodown because of her. And then that's how it's, I discovered everything outside of her. And so when I uh, would hang out with her, I would be like, Hey, I want to come to set sometime. And so I saw her match uh, when she, Oh man, I'm going to, I forget. Uh, it's Marquia. I think she played in the beginning of the tournament. Was it the tournament or no, I forget yeah. what it was. I, well, the first match I ever saw was when she dressed up as the, uh, the girls from uh, 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 gosh, man, you know, my brain is so in lockdown mode for December 7th. <laughs> Non, uh, non, the baseball movie with why well, can't I remember it now? Everybody's gonna be oh, like, League oh, of their own, League of their own, yeah. Yep, so sorry. If, if look, if there was warlocks and wizards, as Kaiser said, I would know it because right now my brain is <laughs> saturated in prep for Kalinowski, but yeah, 
Um, funny, my head was trying to say this will this used to be our, our playground. Uh, but <laughs> that's the song from Madonna. Madonna, who won an Oscar for her song in Dick Tracy, which is IG. See, so my brain is on one way. But anyways, um, yeah, I went and I saw the Shire Wolves, Shire Wolves match when uh, they did that. And that was awesome to see. Um, and then I kind of, so I'd been on set and I met Christian briefly. And then I, like, she could have gotten me like an audition. Like, I was like, you know what? I want to support the Patreon. And so I did the, like, the Patreon tier where you do the audition. And I knew that it would help me out, that I knew Rachel and that I met him on set. But I also thought that gives me kind of a doubly chance if I also do it the right way and actually pay for the Patreon uh, for two months to actually earn my audition. And so I did. And then the audition, to be honest, not a lot of people know it. It was actually for Star Wars. I didn't train or anything for IG. I was pretty locked in at Star Wars at the time. And then, uh, yeah, and I wanted to do it in character, which kind of bit me in the butt also because I was focusing on the character too much and not the trivia. And then also, <laughs> I think that that's at the early stages too, where I think Christian realized he had something special. Well, it wasn't early. He already knew. But I think one of the reasons why it didn't fly also was – you know, you can't really be Macho Man and be, that's not a character that like he could promote because th- there was already one. You know what I mean? So there right. was no shelf life for it. But it didn't help me that like for Star Wars, I did OK. I think I did I did seven out of ten for Star Wars. Um, and I missed like a. I, it wasn't it was just I don't know. I think I just wasn't taking it as seriously, to be honest. And then he was like, well, why don't you do IG? And then for IG, um, I did about the same, I think, seven out of ten. It's not terrible, but. I think he was wanting me to be lights out, especially at that point. Every it was, he was getting ready to do the IG tournament, but I didn't come in to do IG. Like I was trying to do Star Wars, and I just remember, you know, he was like, "Well, there, there's not many Star Wars matches, so you might want to do IG." And I was like, "Well, let's do it. Like, let's try that." And then, um, but since I didn't light anything up, he didn't want to necessarily turn me away because you know I still did okay. It was, you know, what would it be? That would be 14 out of 20 questions total. But I just don't think he, he I think he need I think he wanted me to to get figure out a way to do a different character. I think he knew that the Machimo man wasn't gonna work. And then, you know, I just I wasn't ready at the time. Like I missed questions that I probably should have gotten right. Um I think maybe actually for Inner Geekdom I did six out of ten, which you know what I mean? That's just not good. At that point he's getting ready to do that tournament. Um and so yeah, he sent me the fan leagues about he just I, I think he wanted me to get sharper and uh, I think he still had designs on getting me in there at some point. And then, yeah, uh, right, or, right, or, right away I had a success in the fan leagues and I kind of sent him progress as I was going in. And then when I was 3-0, and uh, that was around the time that he said, yep, you're in. And uh, that was, that you know, that's when I started my journey to the Shmodown. Now, now, do you plan on jumping into the Star Wars division this coming season? Is that anything you've thought about? Yeah. Um, look, uh if you ask me, yeah, I mean, I do not say never say no to a challenge. Um, the truth be told, if scheduling worked out this year, there was a point at some point during the season. I can't really say when, but um, that I would have had a shot at, at being in a Star Wars match. And it just didn't work out schedule wise. Um, and at this point, when I was planning on doing it, I, I'm a very uh, rigorous uh, studier, obviously. I planned uh, what my training would be. And it was, you know, I, I don't want to get too into details. I don't want to rock you to yell at me, but uh, <laughs> and I, I had like a schedule on, on a calendar and I think it would get, it would get me up to shape. It's funny um, in IG matches right now, I've missed a lot of star Wars questions. I think more than any other question, like my accuracy for every other category is really, really high, but I've missed a lot of star Wars. And it's because I have had so many years of loving and knowing star Wars that it was more important to me to cover the other categories that I haven't watched my entire life. But that what happens when you do that is you start missing some of these little small details and stuff like that. Um, but that doesn't scare me away from star Wars. I played along uh, the Chicago match, the Chicago star Wars match. It, I had a lot of confidence playing along. I did pretty well, um, but you know, they're getting deeper and deeper. And some of these questions in that most recent one in the Andrew. Oh my match, gosh. Yeah, that's where I'm just like. Yeah, eh, I yeah. I quit trying at a certain point. I just I just kicked back and enjoyed the show. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, for anything I do, I want to go full bore. And I, the only thing about you know, is you know, you go all in on that. You have to focus so much time to know all the minutia, and but that's not making me a better player necessarily in the other divisions. If I wanted to go into the singles or tag, or if I wanted to go if keep going with IG, you get really focused, but it would everything else would kind of fall by the wayside. So. Um, look, if, if he ever says, Hey, I want to put you in a star Wars match. You want to do it? Like for sure. We'll say Kaiser and I like, we'll turn the trivia dungeon into the trivia death star. You know, that's what we say. (laughs) 
Oh, I love it. I love it. Um, and well, y- we'd said a little bit earlier about uh, about your big inner geekdom title match coming up. Um, uh, that la- that loss you had to Mike was a rough one. Um, curious if uh, if you've changed your study techniques at all in order to uh, try to make your way back from that and take this title. Well, if you notice, and I won't get into what I, well, I mean, everybody knows like, um, you know, earliest matches where you can see that, oh, this could be a problem actually. And just to lift the curtain a little bit after my match against Jay, if you remember in the second round, I was answering the Harry Potter questions and I was interrupting the questions, answering them quick. And Rachel, mm-hmm. who's a friend after saw that she was in the studio and she's like, look, you're not, you don't get more points because you answer them quicker. Like you never, you never know. You might not know the last word of the question changes the question. Um, and so I kind of heeded that, but honestly, you know, really I didn't because obviously when, when it got to the don't tell Harry, don't tell Peter question, I could have taken more time. So to answer your question, the the one thing I've done, and you can see it in my Halavik match, but more so now in my Chandra because you can actually see closer shots. There were questions that I knew. Uh, I'll give you a perfect example if you ever want to go back. The Pepper Potts question. I knew it when the question was being asked right away and the old Kevin would have said it right away but I stopped shut my eyes and I replay the scene and then I say it um, there's no way I mean never say never of course but uh, I'm gonna lose because I don't know a question I'm not gonna lose because I flubbed or messed up a question uh, that won't happen again and that goes with how I've trained and how in my study tactics I've allowed me uh, to train my brain to uh, recall moments and I, that's not a, a necessarily a secret that I care that's out there but yeah um, this time it's more about taking my time. Um, and I think also at, at collision, like, you know, just the lights and stuff like that, you know, even though it was in the studio and I've had many matches in the studio, it was kind of the first big match I really was in. So yeah, I think the lights got me. That's when I missed that gimme, uh, in the first round too. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. Long story short, the training that I've done, I've had exercises, uh, that, the same ones that I did before Kalinowski, but now when I'm trying to pull the answer, even if I know it, uh, I have this thing that I, you know, the more you do something, it's repetitive. It starts becoming, you know, a habit. And so that's what I've been doing. Now, but in that last match that you did have with Chandru, uh, in the second challenge, how tense was that in the studio? And because he didn't seem very happy about that. And I was sitting there like, just imagine how intense that must have been. Uh, how was that feeling during the during the challenge, that second one there? Yeah. So in the Chandra match, like, yeah, that's got to be that's got to be rough. Uh, you know, as far as the challenge goes, you know, he said the first name, uh, and then I I knew I was behind, or I, I forget where we were at, but like, you know, I was just reeling from doing opponent's choice and getting who said it, which is everybody's dreaded category. And so then he was just rolling through because he got spinner's choice. So for me, um, you know, I wouldn't call it a Hail Mary, but I, I would call it that I played the game. Um, and that's something that I wouldn't have done in the past. And I think that's just uh, with the uh, a little more of, uh, you know, getting reps in. And I've been in a lot of uh, exhibition matches, too. So I think that was around my ninth or tenth match, I forget, as a rookie, which is, you know, which kind of makes me feel like a vet. But uh, right when he said the wrong name, I was I knew, um, you know, he paused. And then right when I was like, I challenged it, like right after he said the second name, I challenged it. And for me, it was like playing the game. It was like, look, I might not get that challenge. Um, and, and I still felt confident in the third round that I would, I would get all of my questions right in the third round and then we'd be tied. But I kind of wanted to put me in a position to win. So it was kind of like a Hail Mary, uh, not a Hail Mary. That's the wrong word, but it was like a, look, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to push his buttons a little bit and see if that challenge goes through. And it did. Um, and then I think he was so rattled that he didn't catch the, the Sectrum Sempra. Uh, and I don't think anyone in the studio did. And like people, uh, they say you need to pay attention, but it's like, you're not re- like some of you guys don't understand when you're in the studio. Like I said that fast. Like when I watch it, like I can, you watch it on the show and you can hear the Sectrum, but like that was just me, you know, that was just a flub on my part. But because Chandler was so upset about it he couldn't call it he was probably still upset and reeling from the challenge he either didn't hear it or didn't catch it and that's why chandu is going to be really challenging when he gets a manager because i think a manager that knows harry potter would catch it if he gets a manager like the dagnino or someone who doesn't know but let's say emma's his coach 
Emma probably would have called it out. So um, that that went in my favor, and that was just me playing the game. It was like, all right, I know I had, I know my trivia, but because of Spinner's choice and opponent's choice, I'm a little behind here. I, I and you know I was just trying to figure out how I can get my way back into a position to win in the third round instead of tie. And uh, he, he just the blessing in disguise, as he said the wrong name. And it's funny, he said in the post interview that he wasn't sure if it was between, uh, you know, Ariana or, uh, Air, I forget what the first, the Arian or whatever he said. Um, and he almost went to multiple choice. And if he would have done that and got it right, yeah. then I would have still won. And then there, then the comments wouldn't be littered with how much, uh, of, 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 you know, justice for Chandra or all the people that are like, Oh, he got screwed. So I kind of wish he went to multiple choice, got it right. So then I would have still won in the third round, but the way it went, like, you know, you kind of have to play the game and sometimes it means, let me see if I can get this win out um, any way I can, you know. But uh, for me, I, I, you know, I wouldn't do a challenge to, like, call someone out or, like, to annoy them or anything like that. Like, that's not right. – you know, I knew there was an opening there. I knew that it can be a debated thing. And so I just went with it. You know, there was an opportunity. you got to take it. Yeah, it was a solid challenge. I would have made it too. So yeah. I'm happy sure. with rolling. I think the – because it's like – if I, I imagine if I said – uh, in collision, uh, don't tell Peter. No, don't tell Harry. Like, or if there was a pause, I didn't do the pause enough. But it's like if I said, don't tell Peter, don't don't tell Harry. Like, I I think Kalinowski would yeah. challenge. I think anybody would. And you got to do that at that point. Yeah, for sure. You, you had mentioned about we were talking when you know what got us into that, asking about your training uh, technique and whatnot. And you'd brought up Roxy. Didn't want to say too much to uh, upset her. Um, actually, I wanted to ask you, Roxy has criticized Kaiser's managing of you many times on Collider Live. Um, I just wanted to get your thoughts on her criticism of him, and is there any validity to it at all? No validity at all. Um, I think she's just doing her job, and she wants to get she wants to get manager of the year. That was at a time where she was in real good position with, uh, you know, uh, Snyder, go, you know, there was a feud there, um, between her and Kaiser and, uh, Snyder going after the belt for Mayama in New York. So around that time, like, I get it. Um, I, but also it was a little bit of Roxy being my friend because, you know, behind the scenes, like my conversations with her, she's always looked out for me. And, uh, you know, she, she has noticed that, you know, like I, that I would talk, you know, when you're young and you're excited and you want to talk to Schmo down with the other competitors, it's easy to forget like, Oh, you might face them someday. You know what I mean? And so, um, she, she was really jumping on that. Um, but we had a really good heart to heart. She didn't even say it at, at San Diego at comic con, like the night before my match where she kind of opened my eyes up a little bit. And I've really been tight lipped since then, um, to other competitors and, uh, you know, just keeping it in with the dungeon. Um, but yeah, so I owe her a lot. Like she's, you know, she's been great and, you know, like, there's, I have nothing bad to say about Roxy. And I think Roxy was laying into Kaiser early on because, you know, the, you know, it was trying to, to knock Kaiser off the, because that was a competition for her to, to get yeah. manager of the year. You know what I mean? So, Definitely. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the, the advice that Roxy's given me, there's been some great advice. And so I'll always appreciate her. That's lifting the veil. That's lifting the curtain a little bit. You know what I mean? But yeah, as far as her, you know, her criticisms of Kaiser, I don't think they're, they're warranted at all. Kaiser breaks my balls. He, but he's my brother. So like she didn't, she would always quote like how I was going on the diet and Kaiser would be like, no, nah, you're going to have a beer with me. And it's like, you got to support him going on the diet. It's like, yeah, like I want my personal trainer to support me doing my diet. But if my, my best friend, my buddy is going to yell at me and be like, no, you're going to have a beer. And I'll say no to the beer, but that's just us playing. And she cites that that was like a, that was just him being him. You know what I mean? And I wouldn't change that for the world. Like this draft coming up is, is great and it's going to be exciting, but you know, I can't imagine doing the Schmo Now without Kaiser. Like, we came in, we decided we were going to come in as a duo and take over. You know what I mean? So uh, I really want us to stay together. And, I mean, the way to do that is to beat Mike at Spectacular. Yeah, and good luck with that, too, uh, rooting for you. Um, we, well, we interviewed John Roca last week for uh, for Afterlife. Um it was uh, it was a great great interview, and uh, we got a little clip here. I'm gonna play. Um, I had asked Roca, other than Dagnino, who he would want to draft him next season. Uh, now you know he said a few people, listed a few names, but his final answer in the end to that question. Um, I'm gonna play it for you here and get your reaction on the other side. All right. I think Kaiser would be a fantastic manager for me. I. 
got to know him in Orlando a little bit more. We were sitting at the gate, just having conversation. And I just, I like his vibe. He's a good dude. And I think we'd have a lot of fun. I think if he managed me and Smets, holy mackerel, those promos <laughs> would be, would be off the charts. Oh. Smets and I, in me in the dungeon. Oh my God. Say good night. That would be just fantastic. Well, now, uh, what'd you think about that? Roka's the man, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the promos would fire. Cause like, I, I think I've proven now that I can speak behind the, I can speak on the mic. Um, and we know Roka can, he gets fired and passionate and we know Kaiser can. So like whether we were just in the same faction, but we were all, you know, having our piece uh, of in the interviews or if we were a tag team or something like that, like, well, we'd bring the promo fire for sure. Uh, Roka is one of those uh, good men, like, you know, backstage, he was one of the first people to, to come up to me after my flub at collision and say, you know, you know, he's speaking from the guy that did best bin, you know what I mean? Like it happens to yeah. he's just trying to let me know it happens to the best of them and then I'll come back. And, uh, you know, he, he was right. So here I am coming back and going to go to spectacular. And I appreciate that. Uh, he was there for me. You know, that's pretty, that was a low in my career, my first year here. So he was there and helped bring, it took a while to bring me back up, but he was one of those that immediately was like, get your ass up, man. It's not the end of the world. Um, so I appreciate that. Would I love to be in a faction with him? Yeah. He would be great in a dungeon. Like, I mean, I think it would be fantastic. And I think it would, uh, give him new life and give us new life. Like it would be quite the right. And I think, if anything, it would just this the, for the promos and the cutscenes and everything. It would be very entertaining. Um, but you know, he's him and Merrill are going to be tough to beat at Spectacular, and you know how the draft goes. Uh, yeah. You know, gets to keep them. So yeah, I don't want to root. I don't. I never want to root for anyone to because he's a good dude. So like, it's funny. I want to root for him to come into the dungeon but in order to do okay. that. He would have to lose at Spectacular. But do I want him to lose at Spectacular? I don't know. You know. So, but I appreciate yeah. those nice words from the outlaw, and I know Kaiser does too. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. You never know what happens. And uh, to uh, to close out our discussion here, I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked Roca. Um, other than Kaiser, who would you want to draft you next season? Oh, no one but Kaiser. Come on, man. Um... Oh, come on, man. You, I mean, you can you can set it aside that. Perhaps Kaiser steps down to a, a fake scenario here. There's well, got to be a manager scenario, out Kaiser, there. Fake scenario, Kaiser steps down, not for nothing. Um, I think uh, as managers, like I would say <laughs> probably just because of like the pro wrestling aspect of it would be Jay. Jay, you know, is a wrestler and has that like fiery like promo work uh, as Bud being a wrestler. And obviously when Kaiser and I came in, we kind of were like, hey, we're going to be like wrestlers. It's like if you see our character, we're literally 80s villain wrestlers. Like we we have that the, the, the swagger and the bad guysness, but we also have that little bit of humor that we like to have. And that's kind of like from the old Bobby Heenan style of being a heel where you, you want to you hate him, but you still love him because he's funny. And that's where Kaiser kind of draws a lot of that. But um, and then being that badass like the Road Warriors. But I would say Jay would be a good fit if only for the promos. But then as far as games go, I would also go Dagnino because I think Dagnino is like, well, first of all, just talking game with him behind the scenes. He's like really smart and he's been there since the beginning. And I think he he does such good work as a manager as far as strategy and, you know, the wheel and catching people for challenges and stuff like that. So like if, if I wanted to like for promo work, I would go Jay. And then as far as for game and like who I think would benefit me and help me, you know, in each game setting, I would go Dagnino for sure. Yeah, man, those are some solid answers, man. Uh, Jay would be great for sure. And, uh, I mean, Finstock's great. You just, he's so fun. You can't really go wrong there either. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think either of those, I mean, I think all the managers are good. Like, honestly, I just hope the, to bring the title home to the dungeon. And then that's not going to be a question because, you know, character wise and just me, uh, personally, like I came into the league with Kaiser and I kind of want to continue doing that. So I think it's a little early to break up the dynamic duo just yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. And we, uh, we hope to see you and Kaiser sticking together and, you know, sure. like you said, we don't hope for anyone to lose specifically, but if things were to fall that way, eh, I think it's okay to hope for Roka to maybe join the dungeon. So that'd be great. That be fun. We would be a squad. Um, well, our, our goal for the dungeon is to keep everyone together. Um, you know, uh, if you see the dungeon fan page, uh, it's all of us right after Oyama's win. Like, uh, you know, you know, I think early on when we were all paired, we weren't sure how that was going to 
fit. You know what I mean? Because like you had Oyama with the glasses and the you know coming from the fan leagues, then you have Zip and and then you had me as a totally different character in the IG. But it, it's really kind of put together well. Like you know when you see us all on camera together, I think it's like a good fit. So I'm I'm really excited for Oyama coming in. It's spectacular. I love that uh there you know the, the some of the two of the titles are going dungeon heads or you know the dungeons going after two of the titles. Oh, we have one of the titles. But we're going after the other one. We could have, we could potentially have two of the two of the four belts by the end of the night. Yeah, that would be great. That would be great. Um, and yeah, once again, uh, good luck on that match. Uh, definitely going to be looking and su- supporting for you, man. Um, I hope Thank you kick some ass and, and bring that title uh, yeah. to the dungeon. That'd be great. It'd be fantastic. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do my best, man. Uh, it's about a month out, so. Uh, I know Mike's working hard at it too. Uh, this is a different story coming into this match. Like, you know, I, I know Mike has a respect for me and I have a respect for Mike. So, um, you know, I think this, the build to this match is going to be great. And I think that, uh, uh, the night and the energy there and that, I mean, I remember the energy at Collision. It was, it was insane in that small studio sitting down and waiting for them to say, all right, let's get ready to schmo down. Um, and so it's the, the live crowd in LA. It's like the sequel match. Like that's going to be, it's going to be great, man. Yes, it will be. And so everybody go out there. And if you're in the LA area, if there's tickets left, I'm not sure if there are any left, uh, but find some way to get there, at least watch it. You can stream it online, uh, via Patreon. I believe, um, unfortunately I'm not a Patreon. I'm not in that that class of people, sadly, but uh, I'm definitely going to be getting the live stream for this spectacular. That is 100% in the books. Um, oh, yeah. So everybody get that and uh, be sure to support Smets out there. Um, he's going to kick some ass for sure. And thank you again for your time. We really appreciate it. It's been a blast, man. Got a lot of good stuff here, a lot of good conversation. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it, man. It was great. And uh, anytime. You guys can get Kaiser on here, too, and you can have a couple laughs. He's always great, too. <laughs> Sounds great. We will definitely reach out to him for sure. All right, man. I appreciate it. You have a good uh, yeah, have a good rest of the show. Uh, get, uh, hopefully you're not uh, inundated too much with so many afterlife shows you got to do. But I know you said you split the crew, but good luck with that, and uh, you guys are great. I'll, I'll keep listening. All right. Sounds good. And uh, we will be back here after a short pause for some promos from other Merc with a Movie blog podcasts. Hey everybody, Sean and Wade here to tell you about our new review show following each episode of Disney Plus's The Mandalorian. Dude, yes, Boba Fett! Not exactly, Wade. Set in the Star Wars universe, The Mandalorian takes place five years after Return of the Jedi and follows a Mandalorian bounty hunter beyond the reaches of the New Republic. Yeah, Boba Fett. Did you even watch Return of the Jedi? Never mind. Join us here every week on the Merc with the Movie blog feed. (laughs) Thank God Kaylin will be here too. I don't think I can handle Wade on my own. Hey, it's Sarah, and I'd like to tell you about Afterlife. It's a weekly Collider Live after show podcast where Mike, Sean, and I give our takes on Roxy and Dorinda's annex, on Yodi's producing skills, and whatever Cody and Alex are up to in that booth. In addition to having guests, we expand on the crew's discussions and add our own craziness to the mix. You can find the show on Merkwin and Movie Blog Feed on all the podcasting platforms. See you soon! Hey there, Schmodown fans, this is Josh the Merc Rainer, and I am here to tell you about my show, Talkin' Schmodown. Whether it's Andrew Guy getting hit with a chair, John Roca screaming, Outlaw! Or the emotional retirement of the Shire Wolf, I talk about it all. So you can catch me right here on Anchor and all the other major podcasting platforms. So, as I ask every episode, are you ready to talk Schmodown? I am. Hi everyone, this is Sarah, host of Go Get That Rose podcast, a podcast that is dedicated to talking about all things Bachelor Nation. Join Jay Wade, a man in his 40s who is recently new to all things Bachelor Nation, and myself, someone who has been watching passionately for the past three years, as we review, share our thoughts on each episode of whatever show is currently on TV, whether that is Bachelor, Bachelorette, or Bachelor in Paradise. We might not even know everyone's name, but we have fun nonetheless. You can find us on Merkwood and Movie Blog Feed wherever you listen to podcasts.
Hey, we are back, guys. Be sure to check out those shows from Merc with the Movie blog. Some great shows there. And um, well, let's just uh, let's just jump into some schmodown talk here. Uh, Josh, take us through all of this. Let's talk about some schmodown. I'm ready. All right. So uh, I know you guys. You wanted to talk a little bit about this. Since we since you interviewed Kevin Smith, figure we talk about that. Kevin Smith versus uh, John Drew Dunn, the Pony match that uh, just recently happened. Number one contender, Inner Geekdom match. These two guys are some of the best Inner Geekdom players that I've seen. They are both rookies this year, and they are powerhouse players. The match that they that they put on is is one of the best that I have seen in a while. Um, they're, they're, they had a real solid. They both had a real solid first round. Uh, I think it was like eight and nine points, yeah, respectively. Uh, real solid, you know. Can't get much better than that unless you're, you know, rocking perfect rounds, which doesn't happen that often, especially in in uh, inner geekdom. The thing about Chandru, though, that I noticed during this match that I want to kind of bring up a little bit is, yeah, he is a phenomenal player, but he has made some missteps in this match. Uh, during his round two, he had. Uh, a pretty big flub where he mispronounced the, uh, the answer. He tried to correct himself. Kevin Smith challenged, and, and it went it went Kevin Smith's way, which I fully agreed with. Uh, you know, Chandru took too long, in my opinion. He took too long of a pause, and with that pause came the knowledge that uh, obviously his answer was incorrect because otherwise the judges would have said he was right, and so. I, I I really agreed with, with the challenge with the the fact that the judges decided to uphold that challenge, um, and then he in round three I, I I literally yelled at my TV when he did not know that Billy Zane played the first. Yes. I, oh, I, I, I was screaming. I was like, dude, it's Billy Zane. I, I See, I do the it. same thing, except I'm like, I'm more like, dude, it's Billy fucking Zay, you know, just like, and yeah. then, and then the longer it takes him, the more my aggression level just raises to the roof. Absolutely. And, but yeah, I'm just, yes, exactly. I'm sorry, but I, ha- I had to interrupt you there because I felt oh, the fine. same exact way, dude. Yeah. And like, and he's, he's like one of the, one of the baby faces of this of this league yeah. and so he's not the kind of guy who's gonna slow play where he's gonna oh oh i'm trying to figure it out you know you know that that's something that mike does you know that's not something that he would do so i'm like this dude does not know the answer and this is gonna kill me and it's that that round two flub and missing this billy zane question that's what sunk him if he had if he hadn't made these these mistakes these are crucial things when if you want to just casually play in the inner geekdom league sure okay go ahead you'll have a match or two maybe but you're not going to get very far if you want to be elite, if you want to continue in this league, these types of mistakes you, you cannot have because this is exactly what cost him the match. And, you know, now Kevin Smith is going on to spectacular. Yeah, dude, that's a rough league. Um, and it seems, I'm, I may be wrong here, but from what I've noticed at least, it seems like the crossover success rate is higher with inner geekdom players going to singles than it is singles who have played in inner geekdom. And yeah. it just, it, it blows my mind. And I'm one of those people where if you're like, well, do you want to play in the inner geekdom or singles? I got to go singles because I know I'll get crushed in inner geekdom because yeah. it's so much knowledge. It's just, oh, I don't know. That league amazes me. And I'm, I'm kind of surprised that I have as much fun watching it because it makes me feel a little dumb because these are all movies I've seen some of them many times and I still don't know any of the answers. Yeah. And and that's a thing. If it was like if I had the choice to like casually play in any of the leagues, I would probably take Inner Geekdom because I seem to know more I think of that of of those types of movies and everything like that. But I, there's no way I could competitively play in that league. I'd get destroyed. I think inner geekdom scares me more than any of them because um, nothing, nothing that they ask is surface level. Like it's deep. And um, that's kind of what Ben Bateman was talking about this week that like, if you're playing an inner geekdom, you know exactly what you need to study, but you've got to study it really deep and you've got to actually watch these movies and over and over, even the, even the shitty ones, you got to watch them. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas like, the general stuff, you just need surface level. You need to know, you know, kind of who acted in it and what year it came out and 
who directed it and, you know, the basic plot. And you can get by with a lot of that, but you oh, cannot yeah. in Inner Geekdom, not even close. So it scares me to death. Yeah, um, the one that scares me is that Star Wars League. Like, I see, oh, you know, God. Wa- wa- watching that Star Wars <laughs> match, it's just like, I love Star Wars. But I, there's no way I could. I don't even think I could casually play in that league at at this point in time. Where how deep these questions go? I, I said it on my on, on talking schmodown. Honestly, I think that they need to take the Star Wars category out of singles and teams play. It, it's it's just it's too deep. It needs to just be strictly in the Star Wars league and in and inner geekdom, and that's it because. There, there's really there's no surface level questions anymore unless you're going to go back three years and start recycling questions, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But but the really really hardcore players have probably studied all the past questions, so they exactly. that's mm-hmm. kind of a cheat there. I um, think if they were going to do that, it, I would only use those questions for the singles and uh, teams division, like for like round one type questions, things like that. Um, mainly because, like, otherwise you're just going to be running out of a round one Star Wars question. If, if they happen to have that, that sucker's going to, there's no way it's going to be a one point question unless they're recycling old, easy questions. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Like Bespin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, this particular match I watched at my mother in law's house. Um, we put it on, and she was like, I don't even know what they're saying like (laughs) like she didn't even know what they were asking much less the answer to the question yeah it was an amazing match and uh you could tell uh shandrew was uh he was a little heated and irritated at that challenge that he lost oh yeah Um, he was upset that it was even challenged but it was a solid challenge for sure. I would have done it too, man, for sure. Yeah, like I said, he said the answer, and then there was a pause. And you could tell, like, he looked at the judges, and in his mind, you could see it click. Like, oh, I must have said yeah. the wrong answer. So I'm going to say the right, you know, I, I'm going to fix my answer. That means that too much time went by, and he shouldn't have had that opportunity. If the answer is wrong, the judges should have instantly said, that is wrong. That, that's that's something that they need to work on. It's like they need to not hesitate so much. When they, if I mean, if the answer's wrong, the answer's wrong. Just say it, you know? Yeah. I think part of that problem, though, was um, this was the match that Ellis and Cushing were, were calling, right? Yes. Um, I think part of that problem is Ellis not knowing how to pronounce things. That's pos- That's definitely a possibility. <laughs> so yeah. he's probably waiting for someone to tell him or, you know, give him the – the sign like yeah that's right or no that's not because I, i've complained numerous times on the podcast about uh blown calls by ellis so this, this it, it doesn't surprise me they also was it this match that people were complaining that they didn't catch something that was pronounced wrong yes uh what was it oh i, I remember um, it i can't well smets mm. was talking about that and i can't remember exactly what it was but you know um you got to yeah. catch that stuff, you know? But Yeah, honestly, I don't even remember what it was. I can't remember what it was either. It's something odd. It, it has an odd name, and like I just said, this is an example of why I would get crushed in Inner Kingdom. <laughs> I think it was Sectum Simpra. Yes, that oh, is it. But he okay. said, like, Sectum Simpra or Sectum... Like, they added yeah. an extra letter into it. Yep, that's um, it. But once again, Mark Ellis not being, yeah. uh, you know, really knowledgeable in that. You would think area. That, that you know, you would think that Rachel would have caught that if you know maybe she didn't hear it clearly enough to to hear the mistake. But you'd think that she would have caught that. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, but I don't know how comfortable she is, like you know, going against whatever Ellis. That's says. true. You know, I, I definitely. That's, that's she still needs to speak up, yeah. especially in a field that she has ruled before. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. that's one of the reasons she's there, in my opinion, is is not only to call matches be, because of her knowledge, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. but here, let me ask you something, Josh. I was thinking about this in the match, uh, during that match, um, because it, I've heard two different things over the years, but I'm still not clear on movies that start with the, 
do, how do they rule those? Do you have to put the or not? The last thing that I knew, I, I mean, it's always possible that it's changed, but if there's another movie that has that, like, if there was a movie called Thing and a movie called The Thing, just saying Thing wouldn't wouldn't count. But, yeah, what, all right. I, I don't know if that has changed, though. Um, I know that they had a big rules summit, and I don't know if they ever actually released to the public what all the actual, I wish that they would. I would love to just be able to sit down and read what all the rules are so that I just, in my own mind, know exactly what's going on and can call this stuff in my own head. But uh, I, I, I'm not 100% sure if that has changed because, and it also depends on who's the judge at the time and who's on the desk because sometimes they just let it slide, you know, stuff right. like that. I've seen so many things that should not fly just kind of go by the wayside with with certain uh, people on the desk, so. Yeah, well, there was a specific, can't remember what it was, but there was a question where um, they both got the answer of the movie right, but one of them put the, and the other one didn't, but they both got it right, so I was a little confused, because I I do remember that that's been addressed in the past, because it has been an issue in the past. Now that I think about it, I think they may have ruled that if it's like a one word, so like if it is thing, or like the thing, I think you may have to use the the, the preposition. And if it's got like multiple, uh, you know, like the girl with the dragon tattoo, you may be able to just say girl with the dragon tattoo, you know. I think that might be the rule, but I'm not 100% sure. I mean, maybe sense. they should go by Jeopardy rules. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, everything should just be uniform. You know, if if, if one set of, of movie titles needs the word the, then they should all need it, you know? You should have a set set of rules. If it's there, it is. If it's not, then instead of all this leeway back and forth, you know, it makes things, it muddles the water and makes things too confusing. Yeah, definitely agree with that. Yeah, and another thing about this match is during the after, the, the after match promos, I wanted to kind of bring something up. Mike comes out and, and during... Uh, Kevin's post-match interview, and he starts kind of going in at him about how he's disappointed and in, in, in what he just saw. And I'm like, I'm like, I understand that you're the heel, but you need to calm the fuck down. This dude has <laughs> two questions and broke the fucking inner geekdom point record. It's like, dude, chill the fuck out. Like, I get that, you know, you're trying to get in his head and be all big and bad, but nah, it, what what you're saying there. It makes you look like a fool, and I don't know. I, I really didn't like that coming from Mike. Like I, like I said, I know he's the heel, but he's better than that. You know, I, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't like the way that it came off. Yeah, I like him better when he's hugging and crying. <laughs> I don't mind him being the heel. Actually, I love him as a heel, but I don't know for some reason that specific thing just didn't sit well with me. Josh, who do you see winning when Kalinowski and Smets play each other? Honestly, I think this is Smets' time. Uh, when really? he first, yeah, when he first came up, you know, he was like he was a newbie. He, you know, he he won his first like three matches. You know, he, he was he he was ready to go. But then he went up against Mike, and he couldn't close the deal. And I think that that has pushed him. And we've seen a completely different Kevin Smets ever since then. I think that it is his time. I think Mike is severely underestimating him. I love Mike Kalinowski. You know, in most other situations, I'd be rooting for him. But I I truly think that this is uh, Kevin Spence's time. Hmm. Well, I can't ever not root for Mike. <laughs> I don't blame <laughs> you there. Most of the time, I am the same way. Yeah, uh, I'm going for Smets this time. I've been rooting for Mike his last few matches, but I'm going for Smets this time, yeah. Well, that was, yeah. I don't even know if Michael win. I just can can't not root for him because um have you had a chance to meet him, Josh? No, I haven't gone to any of that. Actually, I am going uh to the season 7 opener in January, so that'll be my first live event. Uh well, he was absolutely hands down the nicest. I mean, everyone was so nice, but he was the nicest person and talked to us for forever and was just so nice. So I've had so much trouble even believing, like, I know it's all like (laughs) there. It's all not, not all fake, but all like, uh, 
characters. Yeah. So I know that's yeah. not really him, I, but I have I'm trouble big, even I'm believing it. I'm a big wrestling it. fan, so I'm yeah. used to all of that kayfabe stuff. Like, I have no problem being able to separate, go be back and forth between the two. I've been watching wrestling for most of my life, so so I'm I'm pretty used to that. Which is one of the things that drew me to to the Schmodown in the first place. Um, and like, yeah, I I, I talked to to Kevin like via like chat or whatever. Uh, and he, he's a super nice guy. Like when I my when my dad first got diagnosed uh, with stage four cancer, he reached out to me and told me, you know, if you ever need anything, man, just just reach out. Aww. You know, I, I, I you know I'm here for you. And you know, yeah, a, a guy like that, someone that nice. If 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 you're not accustomed to that kind of wrestling mentality and being able to separate and, and see the, the characters differently, then it can, I feel like, yeah, it can be difficult to believe that a guy like him can play that, uh, that rough and gruff kind of character. Yeah. So when Mike started being a, a heel, I was just like, I just can't believe it. Cause he was the sweetest. <laughs> Though, um, I, you know, I feel like he, he was so natural at it, which was kind of weird. I feel like he was almost, almost not natural when he was a face which i it, it just doesn't seem i don't know if that's just his acting ability uh kind of leans more toward that heel kind of side but i i believe more when he's a heel than when he was a face i don't know why it's just uh it came off better for me well as uh christian has pointed out to me i don't follow the storylines enough so <laughs> that's true the storylines oh. are some of the best Okay, so this became glaringly apparent to me today when I watched the um, Time Machine versus Screen Queens match and yeah. realized that I didn't know who was in the team Time Machine until oh, I no. watched this match, <laughs> um, which probably would have changed my bracket a little bit yeah. um, Uh-oh. <laughs> when I made my bracket because I remember looking at my bracket and thinking I didn't know who half the teams were, and I yeah. just like did some random stuff. I knew who some of them were. Um, <laughs> it, yeah. So I Honestly, was like, there was only one team that I'm like, I really can't remember who this team is. And that was the self-righteous brothers. I'm like, who the fuck are these guys? And I just, I, I'm like, whatever. Uh, they were going up against uh, the loony bin. I'm like, I'm going for video drew anyways, whatever. So that's who I picked in my bracket for it. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't have known who either of those teams were, and <laughs> I don't know how I didn't know who Time Machine was, because that's freaking Ethan Irwin. Yeah, Big Time and Janine the Machine. Yeah. I love that name. Big that's Time or Janine name. the Which one? Wait, what are you asking? Which name is the one that you think is great? The Their team name, Time Machine. Their team name, okay, gotcha. Yeah, 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 because of the combination of the two. I think it's, like, perfect. It is, yeah. I don't know how to well, do that together. I, I'm sorry, I don't know, man. It, it, I think it's a little under perfect because wild berries. That's perfect. <laughs> that's true. That is the epitome of a perfect, uh, perfect team name. Although yeah. I do like mild berries more. <laughs> <laughs> as a name, sure, it's pretty funny. As a as a characters go, nah, they got to be wild. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I don't now. I don't know about Kalen, but I would really like someone to explain to me the new format for next year for uh, Schmodown for next season and the draft and all of that. Is that something that you could break down for us? I, I mean, I don't know uh, what the like full format of the season will be. Um, I can kind of try to go into what the actual draft is for you guys, if you'd like. Yes, yes please. please. Okay. I think I understand a little bit, but I would love someone to verify that for me. Okay, so what it is is there will be there are ten managerial slots. So uh, right now, uh, I believe nine of them uh, have been confirmed. Uh, we've got let's see if I can remember these off the top of my head: Emma Fife, Winston Marshall, uh, Ken and Grace as one unit. Uh, we got Jay Washington. Who else do we got? Uh, Roxy Stryer. Koi Jandro. Kaiser. Yep, Kaiser. Uh, Agnino. Agnino. One more, I think I'm missing. What other yeah. managers are out there right now? Shit. Oh, man. Um, uh, um, no, I'm Robert Meyer Burnett. Robert Meyer Burnett. Yep, yeah, okay. that's it. So th those are the nine right now. So there's one more open slot. Uh, you know, who knows? I went a little bit on Talk Mode on into this. Um, 
you know, theoretically they could bring back uh, uh, a manager that used to be there, like Ricky. Uh, they could give it to a current manager like Jonathan Harris. Oh, uh, Sam Levine, dude. Sam Levine. Uh, wow. I was thinking, you know, maybe Shannon Barney, you know, Mike's girlfriend who was throwing shade at Ken and Grace. Who knows? It could be, it could, or it could just be anybody. It could be anybody who's never even been a manager. Yeah. It could literally yeah. be anybody. Um, I'm really ah. interested to see how they go about revealing this final one. I think it's going to be, a, 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 I, I bet you it's going to be a surprise. I'm really, I'm really interested to see where that's going to go. Um, Do we have any idea when they're going to announce the tenth manager? No, nah, I haven't heard anything. Uh, I mean, I don't know if Chris has posted anything on his own socials, but I haven't seen anything where he's uh, said that. So. Well, I know I am up to date on matches, um, <laughs> Christian, and um, <laughs> so he has not. And I've watched him beginning to end, and he has oh, not wow. said anything beyond. I, I think Winston was the last one that was announced, like yeah. that you. Like yeah. saw the little clip. Yeah. So okay, so so you know we'll have the ten the ten managerial slots. Each manager manager will have a total of ten uh, player spots. Uh, they don't all have to be chosen right away, but they have a total of ten. Once you hit your ten, you can't you know there's no more picks. Uh, you can do trades and stuff like that. Um, and I don't know if you've ever done any sort of like fantasy football or any sort of thing like that where you have to draft things. Um, it'll go, you know, they'll, I believe they're probably going to get random number drawn type of thing. See what picks they get, something like that. It's usually the way, uh, they do that kind of stuff. Um, and so, you know, whoever gets, you know, the first draft pick, you know, they'll pick their player first and, and it'll go down the line like that. Um, I know if you are a manager that currently has a champion on your team, uh, that champion is protected, uh, meaning that you can instantly take them and give up one of your slots. You don't have to wait. Um, And as far as teams go, I know it's the same thing. Uh, And I believe the top five for both of those divisions uh, are also protected as well, meaning if they're on on a current team that they can be essentially saved. Um, Dagnino has uh, is going to be able to steal a draft pick from either Emma or uh, Kaiser because he won the draft bowl. So that's right. something to uh, think about if you're going to like play along with the draft. Uh, and so, really, what it's going to be about is these ten managers. Building big teams, you know, like this ultimate stable. It's essentially uh, what I was calling way back, what I was hoping that they would do way back uh, in the day is what I used to call stable wars. And it's what I want for any of anybody out there who's listening. It's into wrestling. It's what I considered the uh, Survivor Series, what I wanted them to do as their Survivor Series uh, type of show. Now, what Survivor Series, if you guys don't know, what they do is it's a big match where they used to like when they had the brand split, so like Raw and SmackDown would each uh, take like five guys and they would fight each other. You know, it's like a elimination style, and that's what I wanted for this. You know, this theoretical uh, like pay per view for the Schmodown was you know you'd get stables coming together like making like five person stables and they would play each other like elimination style and, and do stuff like that. So it's similar to that, but they're doing a full season of this. So big stables, and you can do trades if a player's not not you know up to snuff with uh, with what you what you want. You can try and get rid of them, drop them, trade them to a different team. Uh, it's going to be pretty cutthroat. I guarantee people are going to. I mean, we've already seen people trying to recruit other people. So uh, I mean, it, it's things are going to get interesting uh, to say the least. You know who I want to be the last manager? Who? I want Perry in here because she. Perry Nimroff, because she is the most competitive person. Yeah. And she, I think, understands, even if she doesn't, like, play the game well, you know, I think she understands strategy. Yeah, hmm. I, I would agree with that. Um, I, I miss her around around the showdown. They just recently did that that uh, horror exhibition match, and I was really hoping that, that she would be there, but nothing. I was really bummed. 
because I believe she missed out on last year's too. Ah, oh, that's a bummer. Yeah. I didn't Clark, see both. that. Where, where, where was there a horror? Oh, that's, was... that's on Patreon. They do the exhibition matches on Patreon. So if you're a uh, patron, that's that's where you can get those. I am, but I think all that stuff goes to my husband's email, so I'm pretty uh, sure that he doesn't tell me about it. Right now, I believe it's a. I believe right now it's available for the five dollar and up patrons, and then next Wednesday I think it's available to all patrons. Okay, I've got to start watching those. Yeah, they, 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 they do some, some really good ones. Yeah. Um, earlier this year, they did a Rocky one with uh, JTE and Tom Dagnino. Oh. And I was cool with that. But I've made it pretty vocal every time I've talked about it on my show. That when they decided in the same year to do a second one, a second Rocky uh, uh, exhibition match with uh, Christian going uh, for, for this title. They, he called it a title match. I'm like, dude, you're just doing this because you want to freaking play in a Rocky match. And it really pissed me <laughs> off because you could easily have had another exhibition match, like maybe like a Harry Potter one or, or something cool like that. But no, of course, he had to get his, you know, he had to get himself stroked off there so that he could uh, <laughs> win himself a title. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Kay uh, looks like, oh, me, poor Christian, he got me, stroked no, off. Me, That's me, so me sad. Christian, me and Christian went back and forth about this one when I like first brought it up way back. Like We went back and forth on Facebook about how stupid of an idea it was. <laughs> That's so, yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, well, definitely looking forward to this new season and, and the format and the teams and everything. Sounds like yeah. it's going to be exciting. Yeah, and they're kicking off the, the, the year with uh, in Brooklyn. On the 25th of January, Mara Kanopic getting her title shot finally. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Yeah. I, and that's why I'm so excited that's going to be my very first live show. I'm so pumped. Yeah, that's going to be great, man. Definitely going to have to post some pictures and stuff from that. Oh, hell yeah. Mara's yeah. not my favorite. Why? She's awesome. I don't know. She's like know. the so- weirdest, quirkiest chick, and I love it. I, I don't know. Something about her rubs me a little wrong. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I can't describe it. Well, Does your I mean, husband that, like her? Uh, I don't know if I said Mara Kanopic to her right now. He would even know who I'm talking about. Oh, uh, I, I was thinking maybe he likes her and that's what rubs you the wrong way. <laughs> no, normally we agree on stuff like that. I think there was a time frame before she left where she just... Because, you know, she has, you know, her own kind of personal issues, and that's why she wound up leaving. And I think it was, things were getting to her, and she kind of, I noticed that she had more of uh, kind of an attitude toward the end. And I think that may have rubbed a lot of people probably a little bit the wrong way. And I think that's why they've been doing these, like, kind of weird, funny vignettes kind of things with her, these, like, little little cutscenes that they do. Um, to kind of show you the humor that she had and kind of maybe change people's perspective on it. She kind of has no personality. I think that's what bothers me. Oh, I disagree. I think she's got the weirdest, awesome personality. And that's why I love it. Hiding in fucking cupboards and shit. I love it. It's fantastic. I don't know. She's never been my favorite. (laughs) I I didn't even notice she left. I met her and Dan at uh, New York Comic Con, and they're, they're both awesome. And uh, so uh, I'm I'm thrilled to see her back. I'm Merle? bummed. That, I'm bummed. Yeah, I met both Merle and uh, and oh. Mara at New York Comic Con. I would love to meet Merle. Yeah, yeah, they're they're awesome. Yeah, that sounds that sounds awesome, man. Uh, I'm a big fan of Merle. Have been for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I think my first introduction to him was actually movie fights. And how could you not be impressed with his skill there? Yeah, I've never but, watched a movie fights. Really. Is it like debate style? Yeah. Okay. But it's yeah. it's fun. Like they do some weird topics. Yeah, they do. Yeah, I have, it's pretty cool. I haven't really gotten back into it ever since uh, the the fuck hole left. Uh, yeah, me neither, judges, man. But uh, who? <laughs> the douchebag named uh, Andy Signore who can go fuck himself. But uh, yeah, no, yeah, he, uh, he's 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 a scumbag. You don't want to know anything more about him if you don't. Yeah, know he. Right yeah, okay. what? Not good. Not good. Yeah, he's one of the guys who kicked off the whole Me Too thing. I'm just putting that out. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yep. but uh, but yeah, I haven't 
gotten a hold because like I think they took it off of podcast because I've never been able to find it. They used to yeah, they d- to dude, it. they delete like Screen Junkies cleaned house, man. They removed any trace of him from their yeah. network and showed. It's like I wish that they like the current stuff, they maybe just make a new channel or something. I should probably be doing SEN Live as a podcast because I end up watching it in my car a lot. <laughs> But I don't really watch it. I just listen because obviously you cannot watch TV while you drive or well, you or shouldn't. can you? I mean, kind of, but you shouldn't. I do. I'm, well, I mean, I don't. I I say that I'm just like like I do, like as if it's a normal thing. No, I have before. I've got one of those little suction cup things with with the phone holder, and yeah. I'll put it on the dash right above my steering wheel so that I'm still looking straight ahead, and I can just. Like every once in a while, I'll glance my eyes straight down at the screen. So it's, it's you know it's like you're checking the speed. You know it's the same. Yeah, exactly. Well, I don't know at what point I'm going to have to start listening to all of this with headphones. I guess when Kelly starts saying words, um, because she does her first word doesn't need to be schlong. I was just about <laughs> to say schlong. Uh, yeah. Daddy schlong. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> terrible but yeah th- this this first week what do you guys think so far this first week it's uh they've had a few hiccups but yeah. it's it's yeah, i've that, enjoyed it that first episode i gotta say if they hadn't changed the way they do that robot i probably would have stopped watching yeah that I, was rough it got it got so bad right off the bat it's just like they couldn't get through a fucking conversation and it, I, I couldn't if they if they if it was like that all the time, nah, I, I don't think I could do it. But uh, I completely agree. But Darren listened to that first episode the next day, and he sent me a video where he was like crying in tears <laughs> of <laughs> laughter at the sprinkler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that one was funny. Oh that my god! Funny. Yeah, it was it was funny like as a stick that first yeah. time. But like, like yeah. a one-time bit, that's good, you know? But, yeah, if, I'm glad that they went ahead and kind of made specific times for the robot to be active. Yeah, and I also yeah. like that they made it Streamlabs specific so that yeah. people are encouraged to use Streamlabs. Mm-hmm. And actually, you should use Streamlabs anyway because I figured out pretty fast that you get more characters. How much do you oh, get right. with the Super Chat? With Super Chat, it depend, it's incremental depending on how much money you're giving. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, if oh. you only give like a dollar, then it's like 50 characters or something. Jeez. And wow. then, but it goes up like really, like if you go up to like, I think you have to go up to $2.99 or $3.99 and then it shoots way up to the number of characters you can type. Huh. But with Streamlabs, it's like flat. And it's something like 500 characters or something. Yeah, something. Um, and it's like, it's like two tweets or something like that. Yeah, it's it's plenty of characters to write a question, but like, oh, yeah. um, and they get all the money and everything. So I it's use also that. plenty of characters to imitate a sprinkler. Apparently so. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It, I mean, the hands down, the best part of that robot Monday was uh was. Pissing Ellis off. That was classic. Uh-huh. <laughs> and they know, I mean, they have Ellis nailed down. When he is mad, he doesn't look mad. He just, yeah. his face goes completely blank and his yep. lips get sealed. And that's mm-hmm. exactly how he looks when he's mad. Yeah. And they nailed that. <laughs> um, but I, almost, I almost went back and tr- I was really considering going back and counting how many people how many times the robot went off? See how much fucking money they just made off that robot during that episode. Because they oh, had to have made tons, especially off of uh, soggy mini muffins there. Oh yeah. my god. I love that Christian's mother watches. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that is good. And uh, who else said their mom watches? RB3 and uh, Brett. Brett. Yeah, I think Brett, yeah. I'm like, this isn't a show for mothers, I don't think. Like. There's a mother on the show. No, this isn't a show for the mothers of the people. (laughs) Oh, I see. (laughs) I'm a mother, but I think I'd feel differently if my child was on it. 
Yeah, if, if your um, kids are, are listening to that show, um, then there's some major fucking issues going on in that household. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Um, I do have to say, though, I think that we're all behind Christian, so he can, like, chill a little bit. Like, yeah. he's really freaking out. I mean, I don't blame him. Like he said, they they maxed out their credit cards to do this. Like, that's yeah. that's that's big. He's got a family, you know, and they're yeah. risking a lot to, to to do this. And I, I mean, I don't blame him. There's reasons why I haven't gone farther in some of the things that I'd like to do because I, I I don't think I could take that risk that that he that he's doing. But I mean, I give him all the props for it. But yeah, I don't. I understand why he's freaking out. He does oh, need to yeah. chill out a little bit, but uh, yeah. it's understandable. Though. Well, I think he's afraid, you know, he's going to lose his fan base, but I think the core of us, and, and this even happened on Facebook today where he posted something about the frame rate, and a bunch of us were like, yeah. it's cool, well, it'll be fine, like, we're yeah. not worried yeah, about it, we're going to watch it no that. matter what. Yeah, and, I'm sure eventually they'll figure it out. Um. I wasn't a hundred percent sure what frame rate was until I <laughs> now started you know. really paying attention today, and I realized okay, like it's kind of choppy, like it's not like yeah, it's super smooth. Yeah. Um. It, but I mean, it's not like you're trying to watch a like a masterpiece film and need it to be perfect <laughs> like it's really more about what they're saying than anything and yeah. the audio is fine so i i mean uh, yeah the audio is perfect you know I don't, I don't think there's a problem with that yeah it's just a slight slight choppiness with the frame rate so i mean it doesn't really bug me at all no so i think we're all behind him and we're watching and we're listening and I, we can. I think that most of us can tell he's pouring his heart and soul into this. Oh yeah, and I mean that, that he does that with like everything that he does. So and he yeah. has said that you know if he's not pushing himself farther, he doesn't feel like he's doing everything that he can. He doesn't feel like that he's succeeding. So I mean the fact that he is still pushing and pushing and pushing and making and, and is building this channel, even though you know certain things aren't going quite right, he's still pushing. You know, I, I give him a whole lot of props for that. You know, I, I've got something I want to bring up, and it's not a criticism of Christian. It's not a criticism of his decision to put the Star Wars show on Campia's channel. It, I really don't care what channel it's on. That's up to Christian, you know. Um, I'm not questioning any of that, but we were, you know, a, a couple minutes ago it was, um, you, you know, talking about how, He's just he's a, he needs to calm down a little bit, you know, and and just breathe. And well, he mentioned how many views that Star Wars show had, and it's I was wondering, like, I don't know, couldn't he use those views on Sen? And, Do you remember and what it, that number was? It was seventy some thousand. And do you have any idea how many subscribers Campia has on his channel? I, I don't, but I right can't now. imagine that most of those are his subscribers. Yeah. I'm just curious because SCN has currently 300,000 subscribers on that YouTube channel. And I don't know if Campia has more than that. And so, like, it makes me wonder, yeah, if this show stayed on SCN, would that number be bigger? Would it have crossed 100,000? Even if it was Campia's audience that was mostly, he has 196,000 subscribers. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you're looking at, le- you know, just, I don't know, probably about 40%. You know, if you're, if you're looking comparatively, if you did that same 40% on SEA, you're talking 130 probably thousand views. Yeah. I mean, that's a, a big chunk that, that's, that's missing out because of that. Cause I'll be honest, I didn't go over to his channel and watch it. Nope. I, I started watching it. I wanted to see what it was, and they talked a little bit of Star Wars, but then they went right into Campia's, the, the Campia show format of nothing but Super Chat questions, and I'm like, oh. I'm, which is fine, but I would rather them 
it, it was two hours long, so what did they do? Just super oh, chat Jesus. questions for two hours? Now, Christian, if you're listening to this, I can imagine him being like, dude, you didn't even fucking watch the whole thing. The last hour was us doing this, you know? If that happened, I'm sorry. I just, yeah. when it when it started about the first, maybe within the first maybe 15, 20 minutes or so maybe, they started going into super chat, and I could just see it being the typical Campia show format of super chat questions. Yeah. And I mean, that's fine to a point, but I want, I want personally, and it doesn't matter what I want, you know, this is, well, this I is mean, just it, me being a selfish fan. Kind of, I'm not saying like you specifically, but it matters what the fans want. Right. Right. They're the ones who are going to watch it and pay for it. Yeah. And, and personally, what I want is just Campia and, and Harloff, just shooting the shit about Star Wars. Uh, yeah, I wanted the like, rule of two That's style. it. Yeah. Um, I never wanted that because I don't really, I can't really stand. Yes, John I, yeah, we, yeah, I, yeah, I we know. know. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> did, did you guys I happen? I also oh. don't think two hours. I think that's way too long. Yes, even if it's not super chat, even no matter what the show is, what the content is, two hours is a little long. Now I understand that's your, you know that that was their first time together like that talking Star Wars in a couple of years at least. So it's understandable, yeah. and I can't imagine that the next episode's going to be two hours. But yeah. yeah, that was a little long, man, for a, for a first one. It, I do I do plan on checking out this week's too. I, I want to see. If they keep the same format, it, I want to. See, which again, I I could be completely wrong about my assumption on the format because I did not finish the first episode. So if I come off like an ass, I apologize. But uh, one other thing I've been I was looking for yesterday was, um, did they cancel the Harloff and Campia show that was supposed to be out on Thursdays? Yeah. Oh, so I just had doing, no idea. They're just doing the Star Wars show instead. They're only doing that one. So they were going to do the Campia and Harloff show on Campia's channel, and they were going to yeah. do Dark Side, Light Side on Christian's channel. And then they decided Christian said he couldn't do, he couldn't sacrifice two afternoons. Um, oh. So he's, they're okay. only doing Dark Side, Light Side, but for some reason they moved it to Campia's channel. It's probably because they were going to have the show on Campia's channel. And because yeah. that's getting cut, he replaced it. And since SEN already has a whole bunch of content, he figured, okay, we'll make it up to Campia, give him this show. I guarantee you that's why. Plus yeah, the cross to promotion, that, yeah, too, to keep you know? that connection, yeah. to keep that cross promotion. Yeah, but I'm like, as someone who's not subscribed to Campia's channel, I'm not going to see it pop up. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not a diehard Star Wars person. I like watching Jedi Council sometimes, but I watch it mainly because it pops up in my feed. Yeah. You know, and I'm That's not going to subscribe yeah. to Campia, so I'm never going to watch it. Yeah, I get it. I mean, I wouldn't expect, I mean, the fact that he's half the show, I'm, I wouldn't expect you to watch it anyway. Yeah, to be I mean, honest. I don't totally, uh, like, I'm not going to completely avoid something just because John Campy is on it. He's just not, like, my favorite person to listen to. Yeah. And so I'm not going to seek it out. Yeah. I mean, I'll admit, you know, he he's the reason that I am in this space. Because I started the AMC Movie Talk way back in the day. Like, right after they switched over um, from a weekly show to a, a five-day-a-week show. Uh, that that's when I started watching. So I've been, you know, I've been. Oh wow! And I and I followed through all the way up. But when he broke away and and started his own channel, honestly, I I just fell off. I was like, eh. I watched a few of his things, but I'm just like, I don't really like the format of the way he's doing stuff. And so I just stayed with Glider. Yeah, and when he was doing Mailbag all by himself, I didn't yeah. love that either. Yeah, like that wasn't, wasn't my great. thing. Yeah. So. When he left, I was just like, meh. Like, I was yeah. so indifferent to it. Yeah. So, and I mean, he left, like, four goddamn times. It's like, dude, fucking yeah. leave or don't leave, but stop fucking around. So. Did he get it, like, did he just disagree with people and, like, stomp yeah, his feet that, kind that of thing? Was, that was a lot of it, absolutely, yeah. Hmm. Yep. I really enjoyed the Ellis phase of movie talk. Yeah, me too. 
it was short lived, but I really liked it. <laughs> but I do yeah. love what Perry's doing. Oh yeah, yeah. I love Perry. Absolutely love Perry. I even love when John Roca subs in for her. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The mailbag is great. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So well somehow we segued into Collider. That's okay. Well back yeah. out. I, I was just I was just about to be like, well, since we're an SE and live show, <gasps> well, it all dovetails too much. No, no, no. Like, I know he's been uh, SE in for a week, and well, before that, he was part of Collider. But um, yeah, I'm sure, no, I, I'm sure but, as this show progresses, we'll slowly stop talking about Collider. Yeah, um, it's Collider just so what? fresh. <laughs> Collider what and who? <laughs> no, they've been doing great over there. Just just to quickly say, I've watched Collider Live also this week. They've been doing great mm-hmm. over there. I like it. So, yeah. yep. But, uh, yeah, like we said, you know, the, we're an SEN uh, live after show here. So, uh, uh, I don't know. Let's get into some of the stuff that they got into this week. Um, Batman casting news, some, uh, some big stuff Woo-hoo. came out. Uh, looking like Andy Serkis is going to be uh, Alfred, and Colin Farrell they're looking at to be Penguin, which is drawing a bit of controversy there. Uh, a lot of people can't see him playing Penguin, but um, I'm, I can't visually see what he would look like, but I can imagine him playing that role. What do you I guys feel think? Like, I feel like it's going to be a bit more similar to Gotham, like TV show, yes. to that style of Penguin, you know, a thinner guy. Uh, I, I really think it's what it's going to be more like. Um, yeah, I agree. I, I've only seen... What's the name of that Batman movie? Uh, if there's a billion of them. Which, uh, no, the one with, with scary, yucky penguin in it. Oh, Batman Returns? Yeah, I think I've only watched Batman Returns once because he grossed me out and freaked me out <laughs> so badly. Yeah, Danny DeVito as Penguin yes. in Burton's Batman Returns is... Woo wee, man, that is something else. I, I, I personally, I love it, but it is a very weird take, and uh, definitely a much scarier version than uh, most people would, would would want to see. So that's yeah. like the only penguin that I have as a reference. So I'm hoping it's just not that. Yeah, no, I that's can't all I'm see hoping it. for. I mean, he really, he's just got to be a, a, a you know. A, kind of sniveling conniving thug he doesn't like a lot of times he's portrayed as being fat he doesn't have to be fat um i mean if if they want colin farrell to put on some pounds hey you know that's up to him but uh i i don't think that's necessary for this character as long as his personality matches uh that of a thing i completely agree and uh it's the waddle that gave him the name the penguin correct yeah because he had like a weird limp that kind of made yeah, a waddle, so, which they which they do in the Gotham TV show, which I which is fantastic. Yeah, they did. He got like, gets his kneecap broken, and it makes him have this weird waddly limp. Yep. All I know is collectively, um, this cast is too good looking to be <laughs> to all live in the same town and like be interacting with each other. Yeah, that's that that's one of the things that makes me hesitant about Colin Farrell as the Penguin. I do think he's a little too pretty, to be honest with you. He um, is. He's freaking he could gorgeous. Play, he could play any number of other villains. In the, There are so many Batman villains, it's ridiculous. He could play any number of those. I really wish that Andy Serkis was, was the Penguin. And like, oh, he yeah. doesn't have to be all crazy makeup would up or anything like that or play a, a mocap character. But I think that I've seen movies where he's just like him, but he plays like a sleazeball. And I think it would fit perfectly for something like the Penguin. I'm still interested in him playing Alfred, but I, I, I think I think he would have been better. At it. What about uh, Sir Friend Zone? Is is uh, Alfred from Game of Thrones? Ooh, that would be interesting. Who? Oh, Ian Glenn. But I mean, isn't he? Mm. Uh, isn't he the one who's playing Batman? On, or uh, yeah, Batman on Titans right now? Isn't that him? Are we talking about the same guy? We're uh, the Jora. He's talking about uh, yeah. The, the, yeah, Jora, the uh, Danny's guy that that yeah. was in love with her. Yeah, he's playing. Yeah. He plays he's... Bruce Wayne on Titans on the DC Universe show Titans. Mm. 
Oh, I'll, I've never seen that show. I had Me no either. idea, but I could see him as a is an Alfred. He's yummy. Yeah, because because that the thing is, Kaylin, love, I'm love, hearing love. all of this, Kaylin. <laughs> I'm hearing all of these comments. <laughs> I'm hearing it all. You need to clip that out. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he uh, honestly, I, he's a great actor. But I think he's a little too old to play Bruce Wayne in that show, and it's kind of weird. It doesn't really, it doesn't quite fit. But I think he would be actually good as an Alfred. But I think it would be like I feel like people would get a little confused about it, and that's why they probably would never do. True. Who's been your favorite Alfred so far? Oh man, honestly, I think Jeremy Irons has been my. Really, yeah. I mean, I freaking love or, Jeremy Irons, but I love Michael. Sh- King. Sean Pertwee from from Gotham. Yeah, that's I my pick, man. That. The fellow from Gotham. He was really, really good in that role. Yeah, and I love I, I love an Alfred. That. I love an Alfred who is who is like a former MI6. That's the kind of Alfred that that's, I that I prefer. And yes. both of those versions, Jeremy Irons and Sean Pertwee, they were both former MI6. Can you know hold their own? I mean, Alfred Goff from the Tim Burton and the Bruckheimer ones. I mean, he was a great Alfred, but he was just a butler, you know? That's all he was. He didn't do anything else. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I, um, I don't know that I've ever seen a bad Alfred. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I, I can't even remember the Alfred from the TV series. Like, I can picture him in my head, but I, I, can't. I, don't, I don't know his name or anything like that. You mean like the atrocious... TV series. Hey, don't don't do not besmirch the Adam West Batman series, dude. I, yeah, <laughs> man. Josh and I grew up on that shit, man. Oh, I understand that it's campy and it's not. Oh for, yeah, for everyone. But that 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 series uh, shaped my love. Is one of the things that shaped my love for Batman. That and the Batman animated series. Oh. Yep, love the Batman. <laughs> yeah. Kaylin's just like um, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I do, I, I, I do run a DC website, so you know, I gotta have a certain amount of love for that. Yeah, yeah, I have, uh, I have a level of indifference to to <laughs> Batman. Um, yeah, uh, frankly, I, I don't care about the casting because I don't care about this movie yet. Yeah, and I probably won't until I see a trailer. Yeah, I okay. care about this movie mainly because, as far as what he is, what what Matt Reeves has, has said about the movie, it's going to finally really dive into Batman as a detective, and that's something that we almost never see, and yeah. that's what I, that's the thing that I'm most looking forward to. Yeah, yeah that's going to be awesome. He's supposed to be like a Sherlock Holmes kind of person, and he never exactly. is. Yeah, exactly. He's just, yeah. you know, he's just a thug. He's just going around beating people up, and that's cool and all, but I want both. You know, I want both of those things, because Batman is both of them. Yeah. Ooh, what if Batman teamed up with Sherlock? I believe he has in the comics. In the Gaslight, what? isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. With the, the, well, was it the comics, or was it the Gaslight, uh, was, was Sherlock in that series? Because wasn't Batman going after uh, Jack the Ripper in that? Gotham by Gaslight. Yeah, the, well, that, that animated movie is based off of a graphic novel. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. Yeah. Well, that makes sense then. Look at how smart I am coming up with ideas that already existed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just, uh, it's whatever. Um, Robert Pattinson as Batman, I think, could be pretty cool. I really haven't watched much of him aside from Twilight, but I don't hold Twilight against him. Um, cause, He's good in a lot of other stuff. Yeah, and... and same, same goes for Kristen Stewart. Like, that those Twilight movies, man. I've seen all of them, so I can bash him as hard as I please. <laughs> but they are <laughs> terrible, and they do not give good performances. Because they're, the script is terrible and the directing is terrible. So, like, they, they didn't have much to work with, to be honest. Yeah, you can tell by just, because across the board, no one has, like, any personality. Yeah. Like, you, it's just so uniformly bad that you can tell it's not them. And they, so. said, they said in interviews they did not enjoy being on that set. They didn't want, I mean, they were pretty much doing those movies for the, for the paychecks. 
Yeah, yeah I, th- I think they probably started off thinking it might be good, and at some point you're just like, uh. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's like, yeah, in- we're just making shit. At yeah. <laughs> God bless them all. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but- I mean, as far as Robert Pattinson goes, like, when Affleck was first announced as Batman, I was thrilled. I was like, he, this is perfect. You know, I wrote, like, a big article about how, you know, Vic defending him because everybody was thrashing him about it. And so when Pattinson was announced, I was like, man, I do not have that same amount of vigor and, and excitement that I had for, for Affleck that, I, you know, for, with Pattinson. And I think it's just mainly because I, I'm having a hard time envisioning him as Batman. I think he'll do good if if they do stick to this detective thing because he doesn't necessarily have to be as uh, uh, physical. I mean, obviously he'll, he's Batman; he'll still have to be physical, but he doesn't have to be as insanely physical as they have done in some of the past ones. Um, and so maybe that'll help help it to help me to be able to see him as that. But like Kalen said, you know, I I really I need to see a trailer um, before I can really I think a hundred percent buy into him as Batman. Yeah, agreed. I think we've also just been bombarded with so much Batman stuff. Yeah. That it's just not a, like I'm just well just like with Joker, like it was hard to get excited about it until you realized how different it was from anything else that came before. Yeah. Um and so I think, you know, if if this is very unique and really good i'll be excited but right now i'm just like okay there's a bunch of pretty people <laughs> that are gonna be in gotham doing something so yeah meow yeah yeah speaking of meow we never even mentioned zoe kravitz as cat oh that's why i said meow another pretty person Woo! yeah too like, pretty. I don't, know, I, don't know her, I don't know her from a whole lot. Um, I don't have a mess. I think I know a lot of people are like fucking throwing their hands up in the air over this casting, but I'm just like, okay, see how she does. I, I, I don't know. I don't have any problems with her. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, I've never seen her in anything where I'm like, she is amazing, but yeah, she's exactly. never like been atrocious either. Yeah. She's fine. Yeah. She's yeah, a exactly. good actress. And who knows how much she'll actually be like? I, we don't actually still we still know what the plot of this movie is. We don't know how much screen time each of these villains are gonna get. So I mean, it, they could just be small parts that will help to build a bigger world for this Batman. Batman. Universe. Yeah, definitely looking forward to that. Yeah. Um. Let's uh, guys. Let's combine these next two topics here because they're. Not really the same, but they're kind of similar in a way. Um, Todd Fisher, Carrie Fisher's brother, talking about uh, how Leia was supposed to uh, be the last Jedi and wield a lightsaber. And, that I mean, obviously she had passed before they could do that, and J.J. used uh, past footage from Force Awakens to splice in and keep her in the story um, because they didn't want to use CGI. Now... Then we hear a story where James Dean is going to star in a new movie, Finding Jack, uh, oh. and he's going to be CGI'd in. Um, two completely different takes on how to use someone in a film who has passed away. Dude, what's going on with this? I mean, well, first, I mean, first of all, the Carrie Fisher thing, and and she was supposed to be the last Jedi, and even holding a lightsaber and using it, and man, that sounds amazing. But oh, yeah. We're stuck, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but I mean we're stuck with the footage that we have, which is going to be great, and I'm looking forward yeah. to. But, you know, we've got one one fella chose to take the route of actual footage of, a, of an actress when she was alive, and then you got these people taking James Dean and CGIing him. It, let, what's going on with this? Somebody help me understand what's going on here. Uh, this whole James Dean thing really kind of bugs me because, like, originally I didn't know, like, what exactly his role was going to be. I'm, like, sitting here, I'm like, well, I mean, if he's just playing James Dean, that's cool because you're just bringing James Dean back in a movie. Okay, that that's kind of neat. But it's, Jane, quote, unquote, James Dean 
playing a different character. It's like, what is the point of that? It's like, yeah. you know, why do you need to pay, spend all this money to create a digital version of this dead actor who's not, and they're not playing themselves. They're, they're when you could just hire some other dude to play this character. The, the character doesn't have to look like James Dean. It just, it just seems like a waste. It seems like they're just like, hey, they're just like whipping their dick out and throwing it on the table. Like, hey, look what we can do. That's what it sounds like they're doing to me. Th- this That's is right. a stunt. This, this is this is SCN Live. We're talking about dicks on tables right now. Yeah. Slums <laughs> on the table. Yeah. Oh, this is totally just a stunt. That's all yeah. this is. It is a stunt so that they get some... It's probably a crappy movie um, that was not, or it's a decent movie that was not going to get any attention, and they just yeah. want a little bit of attention. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't doubt that. It's extremely different than Carrie Fisher as Princess Leia. She's been Princess Leia her entire adult life. Yes. And they're using, even if they did CGI her, that wouldn't bother me too much because um her whole family everyone knows how like how tied she was to leia and how much she loved being leia and we have enough footage and everything to know kind of who she would be as leia going forward we don't need to pick up a brand new character and cast a dead person yeah exactly and it's like i've heard people you know use the the whole Peter Cushing Tarkin thing to try to justify this. Oh my saying, god! And I'm like, no okay, comparison. Yeah, I'm just like, okay, yes, he's a dead guy, and they recreated him, but it's for a specific character that he played. This yeah. James Dean thing, it's a, it's, it's, he's, it's not a character he ever played, and that would be different if it was like they were making a, a sequel or a reboot or whatever of a movie that he did, and they wanted to do that for him to play the same character, like just be shown as the same character or whatever you know what i'd probably be okay with that um and and like with the tarkin thing i'm totally fine with that and like i said before if he was playing james dean in a movie i'd be fine with that but what what they're doing here it's like it's ridiculous and i and i hate it and i'm sick and tired of it i think it it hasn't even come out yet and i'm sick and tired of it it's gross yes it's it's just gross and I'm, uh, and the whole point of, okay, so you're going to spend more money to do this than you could have to cast a no name actor. And you're they, taking they're, they're they're paying at least probably two people, and on top uh, of all the yeah. all the the people working on the CGI. Yeah, I they have to pay you, a voice. I guarantee you, they have a separate voice and a separate body double. Guarantee. Yes. And so they're spending all this extra money when they could. And this is, it's not like he's a main character in the movie. He's like a third tier side character or some shit. That, yeah, they the could fuck? just. Some no name person, you could have just grabbed off the fucking street probably and stuck him in this movie. And it, it's just a stunt. That's all it is. And yeah. I wonder if his family is actually on board with this or not. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, I would assume they'd probably have to be, otherwise, they'd probably be suing them out the ass. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and something got said about, you know, his family is excited about this or whatever. Yeah. They're probably and, getting a huge paycheck. Yeah, I was going to say, what are yeah. they excited about? Seeing their relative in a film again or the paycheck that comes with yeah. it? Yeah, exactly. This is, now, I, I just, I hate this so yeah. much. No, I mean, I say, you know, I hate all this, but I'm probably going to be in the theater to see this stupid fucking movie. Because I'm going to be so curious that I'm going to need to see what the fuck they did with it. And that's I'll just kind of... wait and pirate it for free. <laughs> <laughs> wait. Money for nice. me for this. Nice. Um, and that's I think that's sort of what Christian was saying was like That's what they're banking on. That's, yeah. That's exactly like you said, it's a stunt. That's what they're hoping. They're hoping that it'll bring people in out of sheer morbid curiosity. Yes. And I'm not curious enough to, to see this. Because, frankly, I don't know if I could pick James Dean out of a lineup anyway. <laughs> what? I, I've never seen a James Dean movie. Hey, Kaylin, wh- who's that guy that played Uncle Jesse? John Stamos? John Stamos. Oh, Josh. Oh, is this a thing? Oh, I'm yeah, not, that's I'm all right, Roxy. man. You haven't I'm been here before. Roxy. It's a little running bit. That's I all right. The, I am the Roxy today. It's all right. It's all right. Blow, she. Blow the point is, she knows who the fuck J, uh, John Stamos is for sure. <laughs> um, 
any female who was alive in the 90s knows who John Stamos is. <laughs> he was How Uncle old were you Jesse. in the 90s? I was born in 91. Oh, man, you're making me feel So bad. every eight-year-old girl <laughs> knew well, who yeah. John Stamos you was. You know who Uncle Jesse was. He was the attractive one. Oh, my man. gosh. Oh, man. Well, and but, yeah, this is going to be over to the, to, the, to the Princess Leia stuff, you know. Yeah. Out of this shit stuff and getting some good stuff. I would have loved to have seen the original plan for episode nine with her being the last Jedi. Her we are finally showing her force powers more than just what they did in Last Jedi with that little bit in the space. Ugh. I would absolutely love to have seen that. And unfortunately, you know, we're not gonna be able to see that. But I really hope that they do give her a good send up. I don't know what they're gonna do, but I'm excited to see how it all turns out. Um, what are your feelings about Last Jedi? I've never I'm, gotten asked. I'm, I'm actually somebody who's a fan of uh, overall. I know that mm. a lot of people aren't. I'm assuming both of you, because I know Wade's not. <laughs> and it's from from what it sounds like, Caitlin, <laughs> you're not either. But uh, it, there are plenty of problems, and I can I can agree with that. I rewatched it recently, and it, it went down a little bit um, for, from when I from the first like three times I've seen it. But I still, in general overall enjoy what they're going for there are things i would have changed things i would have taken out but um as a mid story like a mid part to this 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 story i I enjoyed watching Mm. and i i've seen it once and i've tried to watch it for a second time about 10 to 12 times and i've never made it past the opening fight scene the opening battle i've tried so many times to watch it again opening battle it's like it's okay. It's okay. But for me, I'm like sitting there and I'm like, dude, uh, I know what comes after this and I yeah. don't want to watch it. That's but Poe's not even the same character. That's what no, drives me not. insane. Like he all of a sudden is like this rebellious teenager or something. And that's not who he was at all in uh, The Force Awakens. So that drives me insane. I think that he did have... You, you- could see shades of that if you go back and rewatch it i i i know that there are shades of that character and i think him kind of being placed in a little bit of a higher bit of power a little bit um kind of being almost like the right hand of leia uh it kind of i feel with the way i watch it i mean maybe this is just my own interpretation and it's the way i get through watching it but that's to me it feels like that has kind of gotten to his head and then, which is why he acts like. Hmm. I just I don't love it, and I don't I I. It's just I mean, not I my it. thing. Like, yeah. Like when and I, I re-wa- when I rewatched it, the first couple times I watched it, I had no I, no problems with that joke he makes at the beginning. But then I rewatched it like a month ago, and I'm like, yeah, you know what? That does not work. No, it, no, does. it, it doesn't. doesn't. Work. No. And then, uh, Luke Milk in that weird creature on the, yeah, on what the, the island. Fuck? I never like that. That always bothered oh. me. I'm like, what the fuck are they doing? Like, why would you do that? Like, and then uh-huh. he, like, drinks And it, that look he her. gives yeah. her, like, mm, I'm like, no, good. It's no, like, what? Like, get the fuck out of here. Um, the Canto Bite thing, I, I originally didn't have a problem with it. Rewatching it, yeah, just doesn't work again. So it's like getting a, like, a new view on it has changed certain things. But the rest of the stuff, I enjoy. Like I actually liked the Leia scene. I know a lot Aww. of people don't, but I did. You know, it's just, uh, it's all about personal. personal Big Mary Poppins fan, huh? I yeah, I am. You know, Leia Yondu, <laughs> Leia Yondu. You know, you want to be Mary Poppins, float to the sky, absolutely. <laughs> Mary I didn't Poppins, mind her, y'all. I didn't mind what she actually did. I, I it's more like the camera angle or something that Maybe, wakes I mean, me out. The majority of that scene is pretty cgi and that could be what's yeah. throwing you off because you can yeah. tell um but i mean uh, th- that's the way it is unfortunately you can't really get around that when you're floating around in fucking space right because uh, you know they're not really able to float around in fucking space and you know she's starting to freeze to death because she's out in space so like yeah. her skin looks all weird because of that i get it but i still enjoy it <laughs> well what pisses me off about that scene is um when when everyone gets sucked out, the the killing of Akbar and how it happened so yeah. fast, 
I didn't yeah. even know that he had died. I didn't even see him get sucked out. And I'm like, yeah. he shouldn't have died, dude, at all, let alone in that kind of shitty manner. Honestly, he should have been in Holdo's position. He yes. should have been the one who took the ship and fucking did that awesome fucking hyper jump right through the fucking Star Destroyer. Or uh, through the whatever the fuck they called that thing. Yeah. I that would have been know. awesome. It, it should have been him. If they were, you know, if they're going to just kill him. He should have been the one to get that, not some random character who comes in for this one movie. Like, I love Laura Dern, but, like, I didn't really give that, I mean, her character didn't bother me, but I just didn't, I wasn't invested, I didn't really care that much about her. And yeah. she she was not the same character from the book. I didn't, I, I never read the books. Oh, uh, it, it was good, but she was very kooky and quirky and... In the book? Um, yeah. And I, I guess that's why they gave her purple hair, but yeah. nothing else about her was like that. Uh, in, I mean, and I get that obviously over the course of like 40 years or whatever, you would change yeah. because they were teenagers. But still, like, and I don't know, that bothered me. Laura, I mean, I love Laura Dern, but they just didn't give her a lot to do. Yeah. And I love her more in, you really, uh, have you watched Big Little Lies? No. Not me. Ah, uh, it's on HBO, and you really need to watch it because you could get oh, I don't your taste. Oh my god! Well, um, <laughs> Zoe Kravitz is in it, so you could get a taste oh. of her. And Laura Dern is freaking amazing in it. She is a bitch, and <laughs> she is the star of season two. She has—I I don't even want to tell you—she has a couple of amazing scenes where I'm like, "This woman is amazing. I freaking love her." <laughs> Um, she, so, she will always be Dr. Ellie Sattler for me, Jurassic Park. Uh, True. I just saw Jurassic Park in the last, like, two years, so... Yeah. She's, like, you know, I don't have that memory. Dude, Jurassic Park was my life as a kid. I used to, when, it, when I was ten years old, I went to a, a second-run theater and sat there and watched it, like, three or four times in a row. It was, like, two bucks a piece to watch that movie, and I just sat there the whole day. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I was too scared to watch it because the cover of the VHS tape looked scary. <laughs> that that movie probably uh, helped foster my love of horror, to be honest with you. Oh, I was... Because that was, movie, there are some pretty terrifying, like, scenes in that in that movie. Like, the, the raptors in the kitchen scene. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. That's, I, that movie I, still puts me on edge. And I'm fucking 35, and that thing still puts me on edge. I wasn't a fan of horror until I hit adulthood. As as a child and a teenager, I was completely petrified of everything. Yeah. Oh, so. man, I was five years old staying up till like three, four in the morning uh, watching on my 12-inch black and white TV, <laughs> trying to make sure my parents wouldn't know that I was up because that's when they would play like double feature horror movies and shit down this was like when i lived in texas it was great like five years old dude just yeah. watching all these horror salem's witches of salem's lot or something was one i remember scared the shit out of me dude nice. but yeah, yeah I, was, I, I used to watch them all the time yeah i was five when i first watched uh the first nightmare on elm street that fucking, oh. thing, that fucking thing gave me nightmares but That's i still went back and, and continued to watch movies like that oh yep, yep. No, I would. I don't. Oh, mm, I don't think I could have handled that. Um, I did for some reason see the movie The Omen really young, and really? have always really liked it. Like it never scared me. Yeah. Um, The Ring scared the shit out of me when I was about twelve. Yeah, those, those fucking Asian horror flicks, man. They know how to do it. I yeah. tell you what. Oh, freaky, dude. I yeah, have you ever seen the original? Night. Have you seen the Japanese version, the Ringu? No, and oh, I'm not going to go back and wa and I'm Ooh, never rewatching think, the Ring. If you think the Ring's scary, man, go watch the original. Shit'll fuck you up. I don't know. I don't want to. That movie, <laughs> like. Hey, wait! I think we found her next review. No. Well, <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> Oh shit! Yeah, we'll we'll give her we'll give her that one here pretty soon. Her <laughs> next one actually is the original black and white Night of the Living Dead. She's never oh, seen. Yeah. That. Oh, it's such a good movie. And the one she gave me was the Omen because mm -hmm. I've never seen that. So, oh, okay. oh, it's so great. And I don't 
don't. Re- I may be spoiling a question if I say this, but uh, it. Uh, I don't think that matters if you just spoil one question. But it got brought up like in a match sometime this past week or so. Oh, uh, uh, of woman. Yeah, of who I, plays I, I the, saw that. The, the dad, and it's Gregory Peck. Yeah. Which I knew the answer to because, nice. yes, I actually, he's like one of few, like, um, classic, you know, uh, actors who I, you know, from way back in the day who I could actually name a movie he's been in. <laughs> he's also into Kill a Mockingbird. Yep. Ooh, yeah, I'm he out. Is. After that, I'm out. Those are the two I know. <laughs> Man. Oh uh, well, guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's move on to the final bit here. We're gonna figure we'll uh, we'll answer some of the viewer questions. Um, a couple of them each week. Uh, there's a lot of viewer questions that come in, and there's some really good ones a lot of the time. But an interesting, I wrote one that I wrote down. It wasn't exactly a viewer question, but I based it on the question they asked. Uh, but the question for us is, what director would we want to bring back to life to direct one more movie? Ahead, Wade, Jared. I barely know the names of the directors who are alive today. You think okay. the names of the ones who are dead? Aileen, <laughs> all you have to do is put in deceased have... directors in well, Google, and you get an entire list. I came up with three, so Kalen, you can pick out one of mine if you uh, okay. so the three that kind of popped into my head that I was like, these are the ones I'd love to see kind of, you know, come back and make, make a new movie. So the first one that uh, came to my mind was John Hughes. Mm. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. 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 Uh, you know, Breakfast Club. I want Club, that one. Uh, all, all those movies I absolutely love. And I'd love to get his take. I mean, we get a lot of those coming of age movies nowadays. So I'd love to see how he could modernize his style today um the next one uh would be harold ramus oh did, uh, wow yeah he did a lot of great stuff plus i'd love to get him back in, in for that ghostbusters movie anyway oh yeah that would be great <laughs> and Ooh. then my harold, harold ramus uh, he did like the original Egon. ghostbusters and yeah, stripes Egon. and yeah. i've never Shack, seen I either uh, caddyshack yeah, Caddy mm-hmm. never seen Classics. anything else his name yeah. and wow. he and he played a uh the dean in Orange County. Have you ever seen that movie with Jack Black? Nope. Oh, yeah, in Colin <laughs> Farrell. Or not Colin yeah, Farrell, Colin, Colin Hanks. Hanks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then my third one is Wes Craven. Ooh, and, yeah. He's a big, big horror fan. And, you know, they're you know talking about this uh, new Scream movie that they want to do. I'd love to see Wes Craven back, uh, come back and uh, Dude, do that. Dude, I was watching last night. I decided to watch Scream, and I started Scream 2, and then I watched... Uh, a lot of the rest of Scream 2 this evening before we started this, all because they've been talking about all the Scream movies. Nice. Yeah. yeah I like those yeah. movies. They still I, hold yeah, up. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I love them. I mean, 3 was a little bit weird, but in yeah. general, I love all those. Even the TV show. I don't know if you, either you watched the TV show. No. Uh, so, like, the first two seasons, they were it was completely different. It was really just Scream by name, and that's it. They didn't use the ghost face, it, none of the characters. It wasn't in the same, it wasn't in Woodsboro. It, none of it was, a, but it was a good show. If it had been called something else, it would have, I, I, you know, I would have been great. Um, but then they took like a, like almost two years off and came back with a third season, called it uh, Scream Reborn, I believe. And they went back and they used the ghost face mask and it was a lot better. So if you guys ever get a chance, I would recommend checking it out. Hmm. I just might have to do that. Yeah, it was uh, um, the, fir- the first two seasons were on uh, MTV, and then they moved over to VH1 for the for the for, like the reboot. Uh, which one of those were you going to steal, Kalen? Mm, I think I want to steal John Hughes. All right. Well, there you go, um, dude. I picked Alfred Hitchcock. Um, yeah, it's classic. yeah, and with his vision and him thinking uh, outside of the box, the way he worked the camera angles and. The way his plots and every, I just, I think that would be really cool uh, to see what he could work with and what he could do today if we could get him back to do another movie. That'd be awesome. That would be awesome, absolutely. I've oh, yeah. never seen a Hitchcock movie. Oh my God, you're killing never me. Never seen The Birds? No. Never seen Psycho? No. 
None of them? No. Oh, my God. I'm going to make window. you a list. No. I'm making you a list. There are going to be ten movies on this list, and you are going to watch every one of these. Just Alfred Hitchcock was great. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't doubt it. I've just never, you know. You have to be okay with black and white movies. That doesn't yeah. bother me. He made me watch Clerks a few weeks ago. Well, Clerks is a very different beast. I'm just saying. But it was in black and white. <laughs> I mean, it was in black and white. So hey, she got you there, now. dude. Don't don't black even black try. White. Don't even try, dude. She got you there. Just say yes, ma'am. <laughs> it was in black and white simply for for cost effectiveness. Yeah. Well, that's because he was paying for the whole thing on a credit card. That's true. He's he was uh, Christian Harloff before Christian Harloff was a thing. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're bringing it right back in. You're bringing it right back in. Oh, yeah. Um, and our final question uh, someone had asked was, uh, if on death row, what would our last meal be? Um, I personally... Can I, make, can I make it myself? Sure. But I think I'm going to... I have just two options that I would do. I make this mean uh, cheddar potato soup. Uh, it's fucking the bomb. And I absolutely love it. That, or I just learned how to make baked, like, I just made my very first baked ziti, and it was fan-fucking-tastic. So either of those, I'd be good to go. Hmm. Well, I think I'd have to go with my mom, a meal that my mom makes, which is the meal I always ask for when I get to pick a meal, which is, um, like, hamburger patties and tomato gravy with mashed potatoes and butter beans and then some blue bell mint chocolate chip ice cream. So real quick question, tomato gravy, is that just pasta sauce or is it something different? No, it is um, it is uh, not a pasta sauce. You actually Cause, Yeah, because like, cause like in, in like Jersey and shit, they'll call it like gravies, like the marinara sauce or some bullshit. I'm like, no. what the fuck are they talking about? This is uh, like more like a gravy. <laughs> like you make, you kind of make a roux, but you don't, yeah. you don't take it to the extent that you would for a brown gravy. Okay. And then it's like some like stewed tomatoes or diced tomatoes. I'm not 100% sure what all my mom puts in. I know she adds um, some onions and bell pepper to it as well. Um, yes. And you eat it either over mashed potatoes or over rice. But I like it over mashed potatoes just because I love mashed potatoes. But I'll eat it over rice too. And um, so that would definitely be what I would eat. Cool. Or God, what else? Some some gumbo, probably. Hmm. That's a very regional answer, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would uh, I would definitely have to. Well, it, it took me a long time to. So I mean, I got to narrow this down. I mean, I'm not in an alive or a donor party situation, so <laughs> I don't have to worry about that. I can pick any any type of human I want. So I've got I've got sure. babies, I've got kids, <laughs> I've got um, elderly folks, um, the the bigger people like me, or just your regular people. Oh um, my god! So no, I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, for real though, honest, uh, my, I would my suggestion though go for a muscular guy, but not someone who's steroided out, because you know that's where the real meat's from is muscle. And if you want True. like the best stuff, that's what that's what you got to go for. Then True. why do they make um baby cows like not gain any muscle to make veal? It's like a weird tender thing. Yeah, uh, it's a tenderness. They, they have yeah, they have different parts. Like, they have natural thick muscle uh, in other parts of their body, which we get that from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I, for my real answer, though, I'd have to go country fried catfish, steak fries, mac and cheese, biscuits, a slice of chocolate cream pie, and ice cold Mountain Dew. Oh, man. Ugh, Mountain Dew. Ugh. I just picked, like, one one part of the dish. You guys are going all crazy out well, hey, man, it's a meal. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't go that deep into it. I mean, I if, if you want to get for pasta. real, then I'm talking like five main courses. I want some pizza. I want a steak. I want that's catfish. True. I I'm want chicken. My, that's true. I'm gonna make my stomach explode before you can kill me. Yeah, I'm gonna eat a bunch of nasty shit. So when I die and my intestines and everything <laughs> inside of me come out of my asshole, it'll be extra nasty for y'all to clean up. That's what I'm aiming for. Mm. Well, in that case, I want like a shrimp po' boy and some red beans and rice. 
wow. and uh, let's see, some bold crabs, and oh my god, I could go on and on and on. I love right. food. Now I'm going to have to make a midnight run to McDonald's. <laughs> I don't think at, at any point I mentioned any food that you could get at McDonald's. No, but food's uh, food. That's no, no, food is not food. Well, I beg I to mean, differ. She's, Kaylin over here sound like Martin Scorsese talking about fucking cinema. Oh, <laughs> what the hell? Um, Craziness. Uh, she is the Scorsese of food. Yep. I would. Uh, 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 <laughs> anyway. For my uh, last uh, meal, it's not gonna. I think that, okay. So, Scorsese of food. I think that's a good question. This is not the same thing because if my last meal, it definitely would not be McDonald's, but I also think that most people would probably say, like, if the last movie that you were able to watch, it's probably not one of the Avengers movies or Marvel movies. Hey, you never know. So, well, there's some people, but <laughs> so it's not comparing apples to apples. We're p- comparing apples to concrete or something. <laughs> hey, man, if you try hard enough, you can eat both those things. Uh, oh. <laughs> True. True. You ever seen the movie American History X? Ouch. No. Oh, yeah. Talk no. about eating concrete. Yeah. What? Oh, man. Never mind. I'll tell you afterward. <laughs> talking about the good old curb stomp that is yeah. brutal and just terrible. Oh, oh just my God. No, I don't want to. Yeah. Um, but anyway, on that note, um, <laughs> we're going to wrap it up here um, for our very first episode of SEN Afterlife. It's been a hell of a great time. Um, uh, Josh, dude, thanks for uh, coming on. Can't wait to have you on again as much as you possibly can, and especially with your Schmodown insight. Absolutely, um, it was fantastic coming on. Yeah. Man, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you at on the uh, social medias and whatnot and uh, tell them what, what we've got going on. Hey, hit me up on Twitter. Uh, you can get my personal Twitter page. I don't do, you do too much on my personal one. That's at JP Rayner. That's J-P-R-A-Y-N-O-R. But uh, where I mostly am is over on the uh, Merc of the Movie Blog Twitter. That's at Movie Blog Merc, uh, both Twitter and Instagram and uh, Facebook and YouTube at Merc with a Movie Blog. Also, check out my other sites, DC Comics News. So that's DCComicsNews.com and uh, at DC Comics News on all the various social media platforms. Excellent. And uh, Kalen, why don't you uh, tell the folks where they can find you at? You can find me on Twitter at KaylinRose715. That's K-A-L-Y-N-R-O-S-E 715. And you can find me on the Twitter at JWade1134. That is the letter J, W-A-D-E-1134. Um, and, yeah, be sure to check out Talk and Schmodown. Go get that rose after live, which is still uh, still following Collider Live and uh they're recording now should be, and I'm looking forward to listening to that. So be sure and check that out too. Um, next week, guys, we will have video drew on the show. So that will Woo-hoo. be very interesting. Um, very, very interesting. Really looking forward to that. So be sure and come back next week. Uh, have a safe week and be good, everybody. Yeah. Bye.